right, here we go. Let's do this. It's a Tuesday afternoon, and you know what that means. It's Mr. Young. And it's foreign in the building. Can you hear uh, me? Uh, absolutely. You know, Tony Khan is doing his thing again, but you know what? We are going to tank through this. We are going to be like the crowd in France. Nothing's going to step in our way. We are going to sing our way through this. <laughs> Bro, for all the years that he's been giving us audio issues, okay, no, like, actually, I have my own internet problems. He also finally kena revenge back, bro. Somebody is uh, screwing <laughs> around with his audio issues as well. <laughs> somebody? Somebody? Are you sure it's not us taking our hey. revenge for all those years of audio issues? No, 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 no. Sucker poppers! Sucker uh, poppers! Su- su- oh my god. So, yeah, what an incredible um, backlash in France. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the crowd definitely showed up, showed up. Uh, definitely one yes. of the best crowds ever. Ever, right, mm-hmm. I have to say this though, bro, and I don't know if you feel the same way, but I am a gamer, so mm-hmm. I'm very used to in my youth staying up to 4 a.m., 5 a.m., <laughs> 6 a.m., 7 a.m. play game, correct? Uh, the good old times, yeah, Mr. Young. So I was like, ah, yeah, okay, lah. One time I stay up, watch Backlash in France, and should be no problem. I can go to bed at 4 30, mm-hmm. bro. Sunday, Monday, even this morning. I'm still feeling the effects. I'm like, uh... Are you, bro? Still recovering, bro? I'm still, still and, recovering. Uh. And that's the thing. The crazy thing is, it's not like I drank a lot or anything like that. It's like, mm-hmm. um, okay, what's going on? Oh, bro, when the 40s hits, uh, you feel it in your bones. Oh, damn, bro. Okay, I mean, just some context. You were not the only one that was up awake. No, no. For me, I had high raya obligations. So I was at like my last high raya visiting house at like 2 a.m. And oh, I wow. knew... I knew backlash was happening because I was like mm. eyeballing the Discord. I was yes. like checking out uh, the results and all that. And then in my head, I'm like, how can I get away from all this uh, chit chat, <laughs> meaningless chit chat uh, so I can go one corner and Whoa. watch my wrestling? <laughs> Did you just say meaningless chit chat? Hopefully, none of your family members or friends are watching, huh? I, uh, bro, bro, at 2 o'clock, right? 2 a.m., what deep conversations are there? <laughs> can you be honest? Hey, you never know, <laughs> no? Some of the deepest conversations happen in the wee hours of the morning. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe it because I think some of them were watching a football game. I can't remember ah. whether it was uh, Chelsea, West Ham, like a bunch of my cousins were watching and I think that's why nobody wanted to go home. Right, right, at that right. At point in time. So maybe, yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, apparently, I'm not the only one. Muhammad Daniel in chat who says, hey, bro, we are at the age we can't tahan at night. Uh, Deep uh, yeah, Royalty yeah. said, slept at 5 a.m., woke up at 2 p.m. or shook only. Oh, wow. Okay, wait, wait. Can I find, like, do a kind of sensing, like a poll, like how many mm. of you guys actually stayed up, uh, watched the stream with Young? Because uh-huh. I know you guys were kind of having your own little party over there. Uh, yeah, how was it? And I know you had people from all over the world as well joining your stream, right? Uh, absolutely. So, you know, I uh, have been doing the watch-alongs on my Twitch channel, Mr. Young mm-hmm. GG, cheap plug for it. But it's always a lot of fun. It's a different experience watching wrestling with people. I feel mm-hmm. like I'm not as critical. This, okay, uh, so you, okay. You, you know, it makes sense though, right? When you are with people live, okay, live is a completely different experience. But when you're at yeah. home, you're just sitting there by yourself, right? Mm-hmm. You start picking things apart. You know, you, yes. you become that, <clears throat> I don't, not say I want to say, but you become like that Dave Meltzer type. You sit there, no friends, um, nobody I'm around. Chair critic. I'm ah, chair yeah, critic. Ah, yeah, yeah, you know. But when you are there with people and, you know, you're enjoying good chats about wrestling, people are making jokes, you are making jokes, mm-hmm. laughing at this and the other thing, having a couple of drinks maybe. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, it's a very different vibe. Bro, what's this I hear about a little uh, drinking game that you guys were doing on the stream? What's up with that? Okay, so it's a very minor <laughs> drinking game, right? So, mm-hmm. because I realised, we realised at one point, the crowd kept chanting that suck her poppers. Okay, it's not, it's um, it's something about kicking out at two. Okay, yeah, did, yeah. did you... Simply two. Simply two. Did you read the backstory on that, by the way? Uh, no, no. I just know what it's translated ah. to. But yeah, what's the story behind it? So that? apparently the French commentary team, they've been the French commentary team in France for the WWE mm. for many, many years already. Mm. So okay. every time someone kicks out at two, that's what they would say or sing. Oh, I mean the commentators sing that or what? Yes, the commentators would sing that. And that's oh. why it's become like, ingre- it's like part of their childhood. Now I understand it. it's part of their childhood. Imagine growing oh, up. Okay. It's like, you know, if you're a football fan and your whole life you've heard, go, lo, 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 lo. That's the only thing you'll know how to do, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, if you're a Japanese competitor, all you know from playing winning 11, oh, go, go, go. Yeah, <laughs> but, Roberto Carlos. Okay, sorry. Going, no, no, overboard, but that's exa- that, yeah, no, but that's exactly it, right? So that's why it's because they grew up watching or listening to these two French commentators do that, yeah. and that's why now they are like 
doing it in the uh, stadium. Basically, they yeeted all over themselves <laughs> doing all these chants, <laughs> la, essentially. Oh, uh, they absolutely uh, did. I Let me see, give a big shout out to everybody in the chat, by the way. And yes, if you stayed up, uh, people like Irvin, Fias, you know, Div was there, uh, Mama Daniel, Nasri, all just like, wow. Kudos to you guys. I don't know how you survived Sunday. Yeah, man. I mean, respect to you guys. Uh, I definitely enjoyed watching it back, like mm. in the morning. Uh, very fun kind of being in bed, lying in bed, kind of <laughs> having the show just there. Yeah. Uh, it was a lazy Sunday for me. But yeah, it was, it, it was a great crowd. And I think if you guys were awake, the crowd confirmed helped you guys stay awake, right? Well, then again, Muhammad Daniel said, even in 30 seconds, I slept over the entrance of RKO. <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> hey, but okay. When was the last time, other than Judas by Chris Jericho and um, Kingdom, Cody mm. Rhodes' song, like mm. when was the last time a crowd sang somebody's theme song? Like they were singing Randy Orton's I Hear Voices in My Head. Yeah, I'm surprised that this wasn't a thing or this was never a thing because... Yeah. I feel like voices, uh, lyrics are like, not only is it iconic, it's mm. to me catchy as well. And yeah. it's very easy to remember. It's not like freaking rap or whatever shit. It's like, yeah. you know, it's fine. So yeah. I think it should be a thing. Yeah, it, it's weird, right? Like I'm trying to think back, like who else had their entrance theme sung back to them? And mm. somebody oh, somebody in chat said it, but I might have forgotten because I drank too much. No, uh, oh, <laughs> sorry. We, we didn't the fi finish the drinking game story. So yes, yes, yes. every time they would, the crowd would chant, suck my poppers. That's what we <laughs> dubbed it, by the way. Uh, okay. We would take a shot. La. Oh, dear God. What do you yeah. drink, bro? What were you no, drinking? I was drinking Rattler, so very tame. Okay, Rattler, uh. okay lah. Uh, but uh, and I only had two cans, so at some point I had to shot water already. Or pro probably, shoot water. Probably like twenty year old me will probably either get like a corona or uh, like a corona, you, bro. You a fast and furious kind of guy. Of, Your family, of course, bro. bro. <laughs> I I live my life two point five uh, km at a time. <laughs> <laughs> the, what, what's the conversion? I don't know. A quarter mile at a time is what I still don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, but you know we all Singapore, huh? we use kilometers. Ah, uh, yes, yes, correct, correct. Hey, oh, but, Jason, how are you, by the way? He says hey, he finished a few Carlsbergs with the drinking game. Yes. Nice. I know, Shout but people you, drink soju, people drinking uh, sake. I'm like, wow, y'all on oh, whiskey man. also not. Bro, if I was at Serengu Gardens right now, I would be drinking one. I would drink Milo Tower, bro. That's Milo Tower, let's go. Uh, I should be watching your live stream from like under the coffee shop <sighs> or like 24-hour coffee shop. That would have been fun. <laughs> Uh, I yeah. will. I will try to live stream during King and Queen of the Ring. I need to go and confirm the timing. I'm not sure what the timing is. So if you have mm. the timing, please let me know. But yeah, if um, I know it's going to be a weekend. So definitely yes. if I'm home, I will live stream it. And yeah. my, my wife will be overseas. So can, oh, no problem. Can stay eh, up late. That's the way, bro. There is the, I am always trying to tell my girlfriend very nicely, hey, sayang, go on like a girl's trip with some of your friends. <laughs> la. You know, you have a catch up. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I can take care. You know, I just, I'll just i be chilling at home. Uh, yeah. but you know what it is, right? Doing, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. watching wrestling. So, and, and that's the other thing too, like, you know, our significant others can feel safe in going overseas because mm. there's nothing but let me let me put this out there right now. This might be a hot take, but there's nothing better than dating somebody who has a passion for a, a, a sport or a, you know, something like wrestling or gaming, right? Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about us going out and stepping out on you and seeing other people. We are at home watching wrestling. I'm at home playing games. Ah uh, yes, that's true. I mean, great, 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 great promotion for wrestling boyfriends out there. Huh? Thanks, <laughs> Mister Young. No, uh, no, no worries, no worries. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, can I uh, pick a bone with? Where's our Mac John Moss? Because ah, uh, why? The, the one time that we are live, Mac John Moss is here. Every time we pre-record, he always say, "Why are these guys, oh. these fellas, pre-record? How are I, they?" I, huh? I, 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 you, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes life gets in the way, and we yeah. absolutely understand, right? Uh, yeah. Before we do anything else, though, we want to give a big shout out to our lovely sponsors. We are in the Mirage era here on Kick to, to the Guy. They are the best there is, best there was, best there ever will be. First mm. of all, I'm wearing Mirage Advisory colors. Huh? At and first also, I thought, shout out to Ring of Rebirth. Lah, yeah, of at first I thought you were going to say you're wearing Mirage shirt. I'm like, hey, how come you have? I don't have. Uh, don't worry, Set. bro. You will. You will. Hey, but can we tell a funny story or a fun story about our Mirage bros? Sure. Uh, those people who, you know, our uh, awesome sponsors, they DM me. Uh, they uh. DM us in the chat group. Remember last Friday, they were like, hey, you know, we've been thinking, uh, they've never been to a local wrestling show before. Mm. So, you know, after, you know, doing a couple of weeks of sponsoring us on the podcast, you know, they've been listening and learning all the storylines, SPW, yeah, yeah. Grapple Mac, they were like, hey, foreign, Mr. Young, uh, is it okay, you know, if we go to one of the wrestling local shows 
this me or not. We were like, whoa. Absolutely. You know, the more, the merrier, be it SPW, be it Grapple Max, eh? We would love to, you know, we are going to be there. We are going to be at these events. So we're absolutely uh, there. We are down to be with you guys and host you guys there. Yeah, for sure. So if you guys see these boys from Mirage Advisory, uh, if Mr. Young, you're going to link up with them, uh, we make sure to introduce them so you all can see the faces, the faces <laughs> behind the names of Mirage Advisory, yeah? Absolutely. But for now, do us a favor, okay? Head to their Instagram page right now. Drop them a follow. There you go, Mirage Advisory, M-I-R-A-J Advisory. Uh, they love wrestling as much as we love wrestling. They love what we do. We love what they do. So go and drop them a follow, okay? Yes, for sure, for sure. And remember, mm. if you guys ever see them in person, you tell them, kick to the gut, send you there. Okay. Oh yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Okay, um, so where do we want to start? I mean, after Backlash, it feels like... Okay, actually, you know what? After Dynamite last week, everything sort of kind of settled down a little bit. It, mm-hmm. it hasn't mm-hmm. been the whirlwind of news that it was for the past couple of weeks. But still, you got your news, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. things... <laughs> Well, okay, I mean, we can briefly touch on uh, the Raw Draft Night 2 because, you know, we didn't, oh. we recorded the okay. show before Raw. Uh, I think generally, the the second night of the draft felt more um, newsworthy, but I think overall, overall, this year's draft wasn't the best. Yeah, uh, I will agree with that. But then again, right, I asked myself this. Mm. Were we expecting too much? Like, why is it such a bad thing that people stayed where they are? You know, mm. like maybe it, we are in the phase of, okay, this is like, a let's build these brands around these characters. If you're switching them, then there's never that sense of, <gasps> like, remember back in the day mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. Cena was a SmackDown guy for such a long time yes. that when he finally got drafted to Raw, it was a big deal. You know, it was, yes. like we, we've gone so far from that era. Like Edge was always a SmackDown guy who was a Raw mm. guy. Like Randy Orton was always a Raw guy. Or Triple right? H. Triple H yes. was always a Raw guy. Yeah. So when they finally switched, then it felt like a big deal. Of course, in the last few years, that has been watered down terribly. So everyone is like showing up everywhere. So it doesn't mean anything. Maybe yeah. in a way, this is like, okay, we need to restart this. So yeah. I, I don't mind it. It did feel a little bit of a letdown because like you said, like the whole thing, the presentation, like, oh, draw, oh, like a big deal, right? They get Barbara yeah. Ray, they get the Devon, Tori Wilson, all come back to do and then it's like, huh? huh? But they are on this brand already, right? they're staying, right? nothing exactly. new. Exactly. Right? Okay, I kind of figure out what's the issue right here, mm. right? Why those drafts at the start of the, you know, the first ever few drafts in two, the early 2000s, why they, they work, right? Yeah. Was because they didn't think of it or they didn't format it like a typical NBA draft, right? Yeah, or NFL draft. Yeah. NFL draft, where essentially, you're putting them into a pool and they might even be uh, picked back by their own teams, right? Yep, yep. Uh, to me, that is not the fun thing about a draft. I would mm. prefer the format of a draft to be like a football transfer season. Oh. Then it's fun. So, for example, this one month, right? Mm. This is the draft month, for example. You are you, like, you know, GMs from Raw and SmackDown are allowed to kind of poach or mm. like try to bid for the wrestlers from the other brand. They can yep. make it like a contract situation they can mm. make it like a, a random trade you know there might be like a trade slot yeah so kind of play around with the format but essentially what it is is you don't have people picking a brand to go back to the same brand that they were from originally right you are so, poaching talent from yeah. one show to go to the other show i like that idea it's kind of like actually funnily enough it's kind of like gm mode exactly right oh exactly. no no but gm mode every year it does reset so you have to redraw but they are protected um, slots but mm. you know like okay in GM mode every pay-per-view after the pay-per-view you do trades that I yeah. think is what you're describing so what you're describing is that format but once a year correct yeah I wouldn't mind that so basically it's a free-for-all trading season or so-called transfer season yeah. where you know you can you can have people demoted go go up to the main roster blah 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 but all happens during this period so like <laughs> if they do it outside yeah. it's, it's a it's a shocking thing Jason says Americans might not understand transfer window. <laughs> uh. Oh yeah, there are sports like NBA, NFL. They don't have this sort of thing, right? They only have yeah. dra- they have drafts. That's why they do a draft. Yeah. So that's the thing, right? Like you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I know I mm. don't know who are uh, who is an American sports fan here on the on the chat, but like, I don't get why they don't have relegation promotion because mm. like that, you know, no one there's no uh, you know, in- incentive right to survive and do well. <laughs> 
Can you imagine relegation in the WWE? Okay, you've lost a lot of matches. You go back to NXT. <laughs> I think that's fair. I think in the, <laughs> you know, in the sports-based presentation, wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> uh, Mama Daniel suggests a lottery draft pick. Oh, like random. Uh, that one... Uh, See, it's very weird. Like, if you do a complete total lottery, right, then technically your first draft could be Akira Tozawa. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It throws the whole yeah. thing into chaos, right? Or you can completely work it and make it sound like, you know, it's all a lottery, but it's actually fixed. You yeah, know but, what I mean? okay, like, in that case, right, like, like it just sounds ridiculous that you are, you hang, hang, first draw is um, Cody Rhodes. Like, huh? Like, cannot be, what, you know? Yeah. So I don't know if the lottery, even if you fix the lottery, it will still come off a bit weird. I like yeah. your transfer um, idea. Actually, yeah. what if we completely got rid of the um, idea of um, a, cert- a singular period in the year where you have mm. transfers and just make this sort of like a, a like Hollywood contracts, right? Like a trade deal throughout the year, once in a while you bring it up. Oh, they are trying to bid, they are trying to break contract, blah, 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 that kind of thing. Do you think that could work as well, instead of having a draft? The reason why I like blocks, transfer blocks, whether it's mm. like, you know, summer transfer season, winter transfer season, is yep. that you can lock the so-called the rosters for that six months mm. and then if you want to do like any like blockbuster drafts, it can be either in the next block or it can be a rare thing where you know somebody yeah. leave in mm. between those seasons, but it becomes a rare thing because if you kind of have it throughout the year, then it kind of loses that mm. uh, that, that that anticipation of having somebody transfer. You know, there's at least you know that this one part of the year that you can always look forward to that. Right. So, right. Yeah. I get so that's it. my yeah. that's my thought process for that yeah. And that's the, uh, and you know what the other thing is, right? Why hmm. they do a draft? A, yeah. they are catering to the American audience. Yeah. And B, they do it right before the... Is it the NFL draft or NBA? I think it's the NFL draft. It's the NBA and NFL draft. Yes, NFL. Yeah. Tony Khan was doing the draft, right, remember? Right. So they time it to Tun Tun fall into this very American culture thing happening. Yeah. You know, oh, you all got draft, we all got draft. And Americans will understand, oh, a draft, they get it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like the that time they did a SmackDown World Cup for the US <laughs> Championship, remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, I get you. I, get, I, just, mm. I don't mind it, but they got to play around with the format to kind of, because I, WWE, as we have seen now, it's yep. not just an American pastime, it is yes. a global fan base. So, you can't just try to say ah, everyone follow what the American Western culture have. You got to cater mm. to everyone else. So, hey, transfer season to me makes more sense. More people know how that works. Yeah. It will be more fun as well. Uh, do you ever have like a favorite year uh, in terms of a WWE draft in your I w- opinion? I will be very honest, you know. I don't mm. have a lot of draft memories. To me, the draft is, is just a means to an end. Like, mm. like have okay. you... like? I, I don't know, like, when you ask me, like, exactly right there, you ask me, do I have a draft memory? I really don't. Like, mm. the few that I mentioned just now are the yeah. only ones. Like, when John Cena suddenly showed up on Raw, you know, or Batista suddenly showed up on SmackDown yeah. as champion. You know, like, beyond that, it's like, eh, I don't really have a memory of it. The draft, big, maybe because I'm not American, nah, to me, it's not mm. a big deal. Bro, you know why you mentioned those two drafts spe- uh, particularly? And why, why it's so memorable? Yeah. Because if I were to ask myself the same question, mm. my favorite draft of all time was that 2005 draft. Right. Because it was so monumental. You literally yes. had like the top tier wrestlers on both brands. Switch. Batista and Josina Switch. Yep. But below that, you had people like Randy Orton Switch to SmackDown. Yeah. You had people like uh, Kurt Angle was from uh, uh, Smackdown. SmackDown went to Raw. You know, yeah. uh, Carlito. So, so there was, it makes sense because like the five block, it was a, uh, one five weeks draft mm. and they only had one big blockbuster trade. Mm. So it was a very memorable and every single draft like fit like a storyline tier whether it was a main event storyline yeah. or like a mid card or lower card. So yeah, that's sense. that. That's actually a very good point too. A lot of this draft had no storyline implications, or it mm. was just okay. Like just it felt like a do a draft for the sake of doing a draft because we do a draft and that's our thing. <laughs> you, you right? Yeah, unfortunately, that's the case, right? Uh, but yeah, oh. overall, I, yeah. Mm. Go ahead. So go ahead. I, as in, I was just saying, like overall, uh, we do feel like there is a place to have a draft, uh, week or weekend, mm. but they can't just keep drafting people back to the same show. I think it will just make people like go, oh. Yeah, not the uh, climatic. Uh, 
Well, like I said, I think they are in sort of that phase where, okay, let's just not make too many big crazy moves so that we can establish people on brand. So when the draft, they are looking at the big picture. I'd like to think, okay? I, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be copium and be like, oh, yeah. uh, a WWE defender. But I do think with Triple H at the helm, he's looking long term. So that yeah. when Cody finally or when Roman Reigns gets drafted to Raw, then it's a big deal because the blood like, oh, and here's the other thing as well. Mm. The, okay, so the idea, right, that a whole faction gets draw, uh, drafted, mm-hmm. does that still sit well with you? Because uh, it feels I, I, convenient, I the, la, bro. It is like it is for convenience, but like if you're trying to be quote unquote sports based, right? Like, how does that even make sense? It does not, you know. Mm. So what? Like you, you got your Jacksonville Jaguars and oh, these two best friends, like, we draft them together. Cannot what? Or oh, these yeah. two went to college together, we draft them together. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. But like, I, I like the thinking of like oh, one big huge superstar trading for three uppercut stars you know that kind of you, thing no that's exactly it right like didn't like one year back then they traded like the un-Americans for like one guy or something like that they traded I remember they traded Triple H to Smackdown ah. and then they tried they got Triple H back to Raw because uh, I think they cut a deal where they yeah. sent Booker T Car- RVD yeah, yeah. to Smackdown no, yeah. no but that's exactly it right and back to your point of like transfer windows then we can see this wheeling and dealing as a storyline as opposed yes. to random drafts or and you, you know, know you know what it does? Mm. That helps highlight or spotlight our GMs, our Nick Aldis, yeah. our Adam Pierce. Get get them on yeah. TV, you know. And this might just be one of the best eras. We are back to the eras of awesome GMs. And yeah. you notice the GMs aren't prick GMs. They are yes. not like your Eric Bischoffs. Like I mean, I not that I didn't like Eric Bischoff as a GM, right? But mm. we are in an era where, th- yeah, they have their slight personality differences. Like you know. Johnny Sins, I mean, uh, Adam Pierce. <laughs> yes. He he seems to be like the guy that's trying very hard, very honest. In middle management. Middle, middle yeah. management. <laughs> like, he's like the nice guy, right? Like, you got him. And then you got Nick Aldis, who's like big guy wearing a suit. He's more of a, like, you know, middle management, but like a power broker style. Yeah, like a schemer kind yeah. of vibe. So yeah. I like that they have their little characteristics, but they mm. are generally good, like, quote unquote, good GMs. Yeah. You know what, bro? Bro, Bring back William Regal, bro. NXT. Oh, what, what, can you imagine what? the dynamic? You don't like HBK? No, as a GM, as an authority figure. Oh, wait, wait. But isn't HBK the authority figure? Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, you're no. right. Ava, the Ava, the Rock's <laughs> daughter is... Uh, yeah, not Ava yeah. not, not Vendez, uh, but Ava Rich. <laughs> oh, I cannot, oh, my God. Okay, uh, la. Actually, no. I was about yeah. to say, okay, la, she's improved. But then, like, the bar solo. <laughs> No, never mind. Let's not talk about that. Let's not talk. But yeah, just to wrap up, I think the WWE draft overall, uh, it was okay, more like meh, a bit underwhelming. But I think WWE, to their credit, mm. has locked their rosters. I think yep. both rosters are pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, and we shall see what happens. And also, that there was that wrinkle right on SmackDown where mm-hmm. Paul Heyman revealed that he didn't uh like he was the one that pulled out Roman Reigns yep. as opposed to Roman Reigns himself that joined. The bloodline, mm. right? So oh. yeah, I wonder where that is going. So obviously, we are starting to see this build of tension and like, you know, Paul Heyman doesn't know what's going on. And Paul Heyman is the MVP of this bloodline 2.0 storyline. He really is. He sells everything. Yeah, he is. He is keeping it going single-handedly, I think. Yeah, he for is. For sure, is. for sure. Okay, so other than, you know, SmackDown, other than Raw, we got to talk about the last week of your <laughs> bet, bro. We got one <laughs> more week, right, of your bet, right? Wait, wait. Wasn't last week the last week? Or yes, is it this, this week? As yet, I'm talking about that this past week was the last week. So I'm yes. assuming that you had you did catch AEW Dynamite, right? Okay, so here's the thing, right? Um, I liken it to... Okay, let me give you an example. I'm a huge Marvel fan. Yes. So by default, every Marvel product that comes out, I will watch. Yeah. You know, a Marvel movie. And as bad as Secret Invasion was, I watched to the end because I wanted to know what happens because I I have the OCD and I'm a Marvel fan, so I have to watch yep. for the sake of watching. That's yep. how I felt watching AEW. <laughs> I have to watch for the It's like watching your favorite show. Yep. Like, I don't care if it's Game of Thrones or Pachukang or whatever it is, right? Like, at the start, like, wow, very ons. But then, like, in the later few seasons, wow, the quality, the storytelling all drop into shit. Mm-hmm. But you still watch because that is your habit. And you yeah. are aligned with the brand. I feel like a lot of that can be applied to AEW viewership right now. It is not bringing in new viewers because they are not doing 
good stuff. <laughs> They're telling terrible stories. That being said, I did not completely hate Dynamite. So you might say, oh, Mr. Young, you're just hating on Dynamite. I did not hate last week's episode. I will go so far as to say I enjoyed Kenny Omega's involvement in his hometown of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, eh? Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because that, you... Ah. The, that, that I thought was so uh, so shocking because actually mm. his promo got good reviews from yes. like Jim Cordette, yeah. from Eric Bischoff. And no. Yeah, very interesting, right? Because it wasn't a bad uh, promo. It was the right promo for a guy in his home time who's going to 100% get cheers. And of course, the whole idea is to get heat on the Bucks, on Jack Perry, on, you know, um, the elite, quote unquote, right? Yeah. But that's the problem. You are putting heat on a bunch of people nobody gives two hoots about, who are terrible mm-hmm. on the mic, who look terrible in backstage skits. Like, at this point, Jack Perry looks more legit than the Young Bucks. The Young Bucks should just not be here. Bro, when the show started and it was Tony Khan giving oh. that uh, transmission at the start, what, what do you think about that? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, here's the thing. This guy is so adamant of being, and this is the crux of the entire problem with AEW yeah. at this point. He yeah. is so adamant that he has to let people know that I'm still booking the show, I'm still there, I have to have a presence on the show. It's like, dude, if you really wanted to sell this thing that you got crippled by the Young Bucks and they mm-hmm. are in control, don't show up at all. Yeah. yeah. Don't, sh- don't don't come in, oh, I'm going to do it remotely. From like, Oh my God, you just, you just shed on your own storyline. Like the storyline would have been fine without him. Actually, it would have been a thousand times better without Tony Khan. So basically, he screwed up. his own angle uh, by he, appearing. He did. Yeah. There, like, literally, there was no need for him. It should have started with the Young Bucks, you know, the two of them with their shit-eating grins, mm-hmm. right? Being dicks, being like drunk on power sort of mm-hmm. a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. you are undercutting them by saying you are still in control. Like, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like right now AEW is trying to do A storyline, B storyline, C yeah. storyline. But I just have a couple of issues with it, right? You know how like the bloodline was the overarching storyline, but it was also the world title picture, right? Yes, yes. It wasn't fighting with the world title picture for attention. Mm. But right now, clearly they are putting their chips on this new elite storyline. Yeah. And who gets the short end of the stick? Swerve. Exactly. Yeah, Swerve just get put in random matches, which are good matches, but mean absolutely nothing. Yeah. Right. That that being said, I do like the fact that Christian Cage is yeah. gonna be the world title call it, contender. I think you know he disappeared for a while, mm. and then he's back, and then I think they kind of some sort of explain that that he has been trying to beat his time for revenge since all in last year, right? When yeah, he yeah. Swerve yeah. was a bad guy, beat up Nick Wade. I like all that. Mm. My only issue is this is your world title picture. <laughs> this is being overshadowed by whatever the hell the elite is doing right now. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sorry about the elite. To me, they are still not main event talent. It would be like giving the shine to the Alpha Academy. You know what I mean? Mm, as mm, much as mm. I, I, you know what? I love the Alpha Academy more than the Young Bucks. Bro, you know what? It's giving the shine to Retribution, bro. Retribution. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's exactly it, right? Like, yeah. wow. Um, other than that, what else happened? I see, I don't even remember. Uh, did anything fun happen with Will Ospreay? Because I know Will Ospreay is like the... She got a challenge for an international title. See, Did it, anything like, happen? A week away and I've completely forgotten what happened already on the show. Yeah. I have to pull it up. Well, you definitely didn't remember anything that uh, Mercedes Monet did, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, hang on. What was the date of last... Uh... Uh, I believe it's like second or second or first May, maybe? First mm. May? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going gonna, gonna to pull it up, see if I can refresh my memory here. I completely forgotten. Okay, here we go. Um, There you go. Show opens with Tony Khan. Ugh. Swerve with Nana. At least Swerve got a bit of a promo, right? Yes, yes. Swerve is... They are trying to establish him as a champion. And we all like him. So, yeah. His promo was kind of... Uh, like... I uh, realised something. Him as a baby face, mm. is, he hasn't gotten that groove yet as a yeah. good guy. So, yeah. I, I feel like maybe he just stay as his heel self and people love him for that. You know? Or like, or like a tweener self. Right? Yeah. That's always the problem, right? Like, mm. when a heel gets over, people start cheering a heel and then they yep. try to turn him face and then he becomes a face and then he becomes something that the fans didn't fall in love with like MJF lo- yeah like yeah no people fell in love with the bad guy who's doing you know dastardly things yeah agree 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 uh, oh, yeah. oh the oh, co- the Copen challenge the open challenge oh uh, Cope open right Cope, with, uh, Cope open 
with uh, Matt, Matthew Black pula. Uh, <laughs> Buddy Matthews. Uh, some combination of House of Black and Buddy. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was a good match. Like Buddy Matthews, there's a star that for whatever reason just can't get over. Bro, that guy is Jack. <sighs> I mean, why he, can't he just be that in-ring talent? You know? Why can't he be in WWE? <laughs> bring him back. Bring no, him he, back. Bring him back. Bring Malachi. Give me Alistair and Buddy together. Oh my God. Can you imagine the whole House of Black transfer season to WWE? Wow, that would be insane, bro. Yeah, I think Malaka, I, I think even Brody King can level up, you know, to another level in bro, WWE. House of Black versus the Uncle Howdy group, the Wyatt Six. Ooh, ooh, uh, there you we, go. We got your supernatural battle right there. Oh, mm. Samoa Joe versus Isaiah Cassidy. So wait, wait so what? What? What's the follow up with Samoa Joe? What's happening he, to him now? Fight some jobber lah. I mean. Okay, like, I, we, we liked Isaiah Cassidy, right? But it's like, when the match started, I was like, why? I'm, I, I, I stopped paying attention because it was Joe versus Isaiah Cassidy. Poor Joe, poor Joe. Okay, tell me, tell me about the women's. Like, did anything happen? Anything newsworthy? Um, Sky Blue came out. Oh yeah, she cut a promo challenging Nightingale, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Nothing, nothing interesting there. I believe Julia Hart is injured already, right? Yeah. So she's away, okay. Yeah, she's away. Oh, Don Callis into Orange Cassidy's ear. Oh, uh, oh! I thought. Well, I don't know what the hell you would. <laughs> no, he was whispering. He whispered, but oh, because whispering. we didn't, we didn't know what he whispered into his ear, ma. Uh, are you as intrigued about this as what The Rock gave back to Cody Rhodes? Absolutely not. I do okay. not care about this whole best friends nonsense. Okay, gotcha. Who was the one that uh, turned heel? Was it uh Trent? Trent, okay. okay got Trent Barrett. Got <laughs> Trent. Oh, okay. and the whole thing was like, uh, what the other guy, the Chuck had to retire. Chuck. Uh-huh. So Chuck like, is out? Yeah, yeah. That's the story they are trying to tell uh, after the brutal beatdown, the parking lot brawl that they had on, I can't even remember, Rampage or Collision. Yeah, way yeah, to put yeah. that angle on a show nobody watches. Like yeah, some yeah. brutal bloodbath of a match, right? I saw and, the and, Instagram photos. And somebody, something somewhere along the lines, Rocky Romero is somehow involved, right? Yeah, I remember yeah. like they were interviewing him and then he just cut a promo and then that's it. I'm like, oh, there's so much stuff that happens that like there's no point in happening. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Learning Tree versus Shiba. Oh my god. Oh, oh was it? I forgot about that. I I think you know what? Mentally I tried to scrub this match from my memory because you it was it. Oh, did you watch this match, by the way? I only saw highlights and I saw Jericho wearing his trunks and I immediately was like, no, I'm not going to watch this half-naked <laughs> guy looking like that. Nah, I'm not going to watch You that. know what? I actually like Shibata in this match. Okay? Oh, you like Shibata more than uh, Chris Jericho. But this match was so... Oh my, it was everything that you hate about this, like the horrible fake chops, mm-hmm. you know, put the can over the head and then, there were just so many moments where it was just cringe Yeah, and... It made the the industry look fake as f. Uh, what is one thing I don't understand about Chris Jericho? Because I thought Chris Jericho, I always consider him a great, you know, wrestler technician yeah. and all that. But then why he devolved so bad until his in ring work? Is it because of his environment? Because I in think WWE, so. he obviously put in a lot of effort, and now he like he don't give a fuck. Yeah, so that's the whole thing with AEW, right? Like because they don't have that internal competition. Like competition is a real thing. Like when you're trying to compete for your spot, you will look your best. You will do your best. He yeah. has a guaranteed spot at the top. He has become the thing he hates the most. Remember, he was the guy. <laughs> Complain about Hogan, complain about the click. He yeah. has now become that which he hates. Like, how poetic is that? Yeah, and nobody can challenge him because nobody wants to go out to his face and say, hey, Chris Jericho, mm. what the fuck happened to you? Like, you know, then he will make it into a whole meme and think that is he's very funny or what. And Oh, it was so bad. And you remember at one point, he actually looked great physically. Like, he had cut yeah, a lot yeah. of weight. Uh, I think the uh, Jericho Precision Society at the start yeah, of the year. the era, right? Then like, I don't know what happened. He, I mean, and I don't body shame or anything like that, but he looks like he doesn't give a crap anymore. And then now that he switched to trunks, it makes it look even worse. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the thing, right? Like, even to me, Matt Hardy, who just came back to TNA, yeah. is in much better shape. Yes, yes. Right? So, but I don't know, man. Wow, I don't I don't, what Chris needs to step, he really does need to step away. Yeah, and this is coming from a Chris Jericho fan. Yeah? This is coming from like I interviewed the guy. I, I loved his work back in the WWE, and now it's just okay. like, what are you doing? 
when you interview him, that was when he was in Singapore, right? He was in Singapore, yeah. The 2002 WWE. Something like that. I remember yeah. he was wearing hotel slippers, the, you know, the white uh, color fuzzy fuzzy yeah. one. Uh. Yeah, yeah, but he more or less was in great shape. La. <laughs> oh, he was in phenomenal shape. This was like, you know, the start of Fozzy. It was his Y2J era, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. This was, was he uh, the world champion at this point? Though? He lost the title. No, no, he, no, he lost, title. lost the title already. Okay, okay. But yeah, you, okay. I'd rather you have that memory of Chris Jericho, that prime <laughs> Jericho, not yeah, whatever not, you're seeing now, man. Yeah, that one, oh, jalak, jalak. Um, jalak, there jalak. was a bit of a backstage thing with Willow and Chris and Stokely. I don't know why Stokely is there. Mm. I think they are trying to set up a Chris and Willow, like Chris Statlander is going to turn. I see what I they're see. doing. I don't hate it. You know, I like I Chris Statlander. I like Willow, but Stokely mm-hmm. very like, Added on, tacked on. Yeah, you know? yeah. We, we actually we can see in the roster those people that have talent, that yeah. has potential. Uh, I just found out, you know, those people that I was thinking like, where are all these people? Like people mm. like Ricky Starks apparently is injured. Ah. People like uh freaking Britt Baker is also out with like a very long term injury. So the the ones that we was thinking like, why no one is pushing them or you know featuring them is they just been out injured. So I do not know what this means with regards to their wrestling style that you're having all these long-term injuries. Is it well, all catching up to them, all this so-called crazy sport fest style? To be fair, WWE has a pretty extensive list of injuries right now as well. I know a lot of people are pointing that out online when people talk about AEW's injuries, right? The difference is, and I've said this before, the difference is being injured after putting your body through a lot and being highlighted in a massive way at WrestleMania, yeah. Yeah. right? It's like, it's a risk reward thing. You're gonna throw yourself off a high ladder, crash through tables on a rampage that nobody's gonna watch, or at WrestleMania. If you're gonna do it, do it at WrestleMania. Don't do it on rampage. You know what I mean? Exactly right. Exactly. Yeah. So I think I think people need to understand like why you need to kind of save your bullets, shoot yeah. at the right time, you know, yeah. put yourself out over at the right time. So yeah. But then again, who are we to say they love this is their love and joy? Like Brian Danielson says, you know, like after when he's in heaven, the ring is where he's... So he's going to still do all this shit and more power to them. It's just what they want in life. But as a product for us, it's like we see, uh, you know? Well, like we can, we can, you know, kind of circle back to the good thing about Dynamite to me as well. Mm. Kenny Omega's promo, right? Yep. You know why I like it so much? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he has been spending all his time trying to showcase his in-ring ability, mm. make it about the matches... Less yep. about the feuds. But this is the first time he actually had to show some character. Yeah. Personality, growth. Yeah. And yeah. compassion. Like, you know, trying to get, uh, evoke emotion out of the crowd as opposed to doing best bout machine stuff. Yeah. Uh, Okada is, <laughs> I am absolutely unimpressed, unfortunately. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I know he has a history here, but like every time he shows up, he feels out of place. I don't know where, how good is his English or like, is he good, uh, trying to like help you know, uh, brush up his English speaking skills because I feel like uh, if he can't deliver in the ring, he needs mm. to d- develop some sort of personality. Which but he if, can't also. Yeah, but if he can't communicate, then then how, bro? You know, um, like I mean, we've talked about before. Then have a, see that's the other thing, right? Yeah, I don't like his facials. That's such a weird thing. I don't like his face. No, <laughs> but like. He doesn't have an expressive face. And by expressive, I don't mean over-expressive. Like, you know, like the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka, yeah. Kyrie, they're always doing some funny face, right? Like, like you know, Roman. Okay, let's use Roman as an example, right? He d- mm-hmm. doesn't say a lot, but when he does, it's impactful. When he's in the ring and he's selling, you know, even mm. just a headlock, it's like, talk about like headlock, right? Like yep. you're selling that he looks intense. Okada Bro. has this blank face all the time. I would dare say even Shibata comes across as more menacing. Yes. Expression-wise. Shibata legit looks like, hey, I, do, I don't know, he's like a quiet guy. Like I don't think we should mess with him. He looks like he could fuck me up, you know? Yeah, Whereas yeah. Okada just like, just yeah. like very bland, blank face. Yeah. I would argue the Keshta should be in that role, right? Mm. Because at least the Keshta, he got that, he got a bit of that young Yakuza cocky vibe to him. Yeah. Yeah. Even even maybe he's not overly expression, uh, shows a lot of expression, but I feel like you can look at him like, oh, okay, this guy got something, you know, yeah. he comes out as a better. But I don't know, maybe we pass Okada's prime because Okada yeah. did a lot of his great stuff in New Japan. I think by the yeah. time he's here now, he's suffering from the Ibushi problem, bro. Yes. He cannot <laughs> deliver in the ring, right? There's the mystique, but the mystique is lost instantly when he gets in the ring. So Oh my God, Tanahashi. Tanahashi, <laughs> that's another fella. So... Here's uh, the thing. Yeah, but, what is yeah. the solution to that? 
don't effing put him in the ring. See, that's the problem with Tony Khan. He has a new action figure he want to take out and play. He cannot put it one side, let people be old and look. He must yeah. display it, right? Imagine yeah. if Okada comes in and he says nothing, does nothing. He just gets his assassins to whack people. Imagine yeah, if she, uh, if Shibata was what his hitman and mm-hmm. Tan, um, Takeshka was his young Yakuza but like a brash version of him. Yeah, Imagine yeah. that story instead of uh, two bitches in the Young Bucks. Yeah. yeah. Right? Young, young Bucks can't carry the, the load in nope. the mic, you know, for nope. this at all. Absolutely at all. not. Yeah. Well, you know what? Speaking of action figures and toy collectors, uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, my God. So this past uh, weekend, we actually caught up with Sean. Recently, his apartment, his house was featured, right? And mm-hmm. when... Foreign saw that when I saw that we were like oh my god this guy is our tribe he's our people yeah man, yeah, man. so you guys stay tuned until the end of the podcast we have an exclusive interview with him mm. and bro you will not believe some of the rare items he has to show us one also is an exclusive huh, Mr. Young? yeah it absolutely is I actually teased it the other day uh, while I was doing my Twitch stream right mm. it is not what you would think it is not an action figure it is not a title belt it is something so rare and I, my mind was so blown when he showed mm. it to us I'm like wow how in the heck did you get your hands on that let me give you a bit of a tease mm-hmm. it's just a stack of papers Ooh. but what could it be what could be on those pages? <laughs> oh, so yeah. oh, you see how okay. we tease? Our tease okay, our promo. Oh. This is not bad. Not bad. Our promo <laughs> skills bad. are quite there. Not Paul Heyman level, but you know, quite there. Okay, um, okay. So yeah, there we go. That's Dynamite. I'm actually very glad I don't have to watch it. I'll probably actually still watch it this week. Not going to lie. I'll have it in the mm-hmm. background. I won't try to pay attention to it. Oh, and okay. you know, I don't... Okay, let me circle back. I don't hate what they're doing. At least they're doing something. It just sucks that they're doing it with people who will never draw a dime. Yeah, yeah. Put this same copy paste storyline and have it as MJF or oh. have it as freaking Christian Cage. Like mm. I tell you, this will be money. So, well, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it that, is. That sigh, you know, that sigh. Like, uh, uh, okay, come. Let's talk about stuff that's fun. Like, let let's go talk about this past weekend WWE mm. backlash when France, Viva yeah. la France. But before yeah. we do that, though, we realize that it is lunchtime right now. Mm. And I don't know, maybe you're feeling a little bit peckish, but you don't want to go out and get makan because you're lazy to go out. Or maybe you are looking to cater, you know? Uh, boy, do we have something very special for you. Check this out. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, All right. My bro, you want to tell us a little bit about lemak? Okay, bro. Guys, this is an exclusive we want to share with you guys. We will talk about how, you know, Mirage is one of our uh, awesome sponsors for the podcast. We might, we might have a future food sponsor bro a mm-hmm. lunchtime food sponsor on the podcast uh, if you love Malay slash Indonesian cuisine you love yes. them nasi padang you love that paru paru balado you love that laksa you love that bagadil all oh. that good stuff roti kirai oh yo oh, so we actually have partnered up with this uh, company this restaurant they call themselves Lemak L-E-M-A-Q mm. their Instagram is at Lemak dot Lemak and they are doing a live stall pop-up at Singapore Expo, I believe, for this uh, event called Mark Besar. Yeah, let uh, me show you. Mark Besar, this is the, the pop-up's uh, Instagram page, yes? Yes, I believe the event is happening in two weeks' time. Yes, so, like, 17th think, to 19th of May at the Grand Market Singapore Expo. Yeah, so you know how, you know, they talk about you know, when the Andrew the Statement Tank have the connections, right? Mm, mm, mm. So apparently, Foreign also have his connections as well, you know? <laughs> I, I, I've been on this uh, mission of uh, this... Uh, I'm a, a missionary, la, in a way, right? Is that the right word to say? Going about uh, sp- spreading the gospel of wrestling. I know it sounds wrong. Yeah. Stop yourself there, Mr. Young, before you say anything. <laughs> uh, no, wait, wait, wait. So, so I, I've been kind of like, you know, meeting people, networking here and there. And I just needed to know one thing. When I talk yeah. to brands, right? I just say, hey, you guys wrestling fan? Or you guys used to watch wrestling? Right? <laughs> Thankfully, this the owner of this company, this restaurant, is a wrestling fan. And his mm. eyes perked up. Or Can your eyes perked up? No, your ears perked up. Yeah. When he heard that we are doing a wrestling podcast. And he was like, hmm, okay, test run. We, I have this event happening uh, at uh, Expo in in two weeks' time, 17th of May weekend. Uh, can you guys promote it on the podcast? If anyone from Kick to the Guy who's listening in comes to Lemak and tell them, hey, 
we found out about you guys through Kit Tragat. Yep. And enough people do that and enough people follow the Instagram thanks to us, they might come on as a permanent sponsor oh, for the just- season. Just imagine, right? Not only mm. do we have Mirage, who are lovely folk, but we also have a food sponsor for you. And you never know, you know, at a party, you might just, uh, at one of our kick to the gut parties, Lemak might be there as well. Like, mm. think about that. Imagine that. Imagine this. Ooh. Okay, so, guys, we need you guys to do us a favor. Go drop and fall. Do exactly what I'm doing right now. You see that? Yeah, you yeah. see that follow button right there? Lemak, dot Lemak you go. on Instagram, there right? You ah, uh-huh. you hit that follow. That's what uh-huh. you do, baby. That's how you do it. Okay, Baby. let's bump yeah. those numbers up. Show them the power of wrestling and the kick to the gut universe to yes. borrow a phrase. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And you know, the best part is we are a lunchtime podcast. You mm. guys are a lunchtime crowd. I'm sure you're all eating your lunch while listening to the podcast. You're all hungry. You want to order some lemma? Go check them out as well. They, I, I, I mean... Who doesn't love Malay cuisines? Indonesian Absolutely. cuisine. Go for I, it, bro. I mean, they like they have a straight up order page for, for your next event. If you're thinking about, you know, what kind of food. I mean, look at that. Yeah. I believe they do like, you know, like weddings. Oh, yeah, uh, they, for sure. They do like uh like pop-up live stations, expo. Even you need uh you are a corporate, uh, if you're a corporate mm. guy like uh, both of us, you need a corporate vendor for your event. There some you go. Buffet or caterer. You can call them up. There so, you go. once again, do us a favor. Go over to their Facebook, I mean, uh, Instagram. Do they have Facebook? Maybe they have Facebook. I also. believe they do. But yeah, okay. Instagram and their Instagram website, is one, I think huh? it's the main one. Yeah. Okay, so go to Instagram, lemak.lemak. Hit follow. Do us a favor. We thank you so very much. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. Oh, bro, now I'm hungry lah. Hey, alama. Wait, wait, wait. We get through the podcast for the Google Podcast. Okay, show, okay, okay. It's time to go to France. Viva la France. They France were in go. Lyon, France, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, right off the rip. Let's talk about that crowd. Ooh, okay. Let's do it. And do it. I'm going to give a hot take right now. Go for I it. Think, I think to a lot of people, this is going to be a hot take. When people say, what's the best crowd a WWE live event has been to in the past couple of years, right? Yeah. People have been saying, oh yeah, France, definitely number one. Mm-hmm. I say Puerto Rico, last year's backlash is number one. France, number two. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not okay. saying I dislike the crowd and the interaction. I actually loved it. And I will mm-hmm. go as far to say that this crowd elevated a very mediocre PLE. Okay? Ah, I see. Okay. It made moments like Jay Uso's yeet, his entrance. It made moments like Randy Orton's entrance and the wins. It made all those moments 10 times better. Yeah. The issue, and I don't know if it's an issue, but the one thing that kind of bugged me was mm-hmm. they were overshadowing the matches more than mm. more often than not. I okay? see. You I know, see. every time the, the two count kick out, and we talked about it, is their thing, right? Yeah. It kind of got annoying after a while. Like I told you, on stream, we were having a bit of a drinking game, so I didn't mind it that much. We were just goofing off. But yeah. I can then imagine, like, if you're watching it as an event, and it's like... You know, like, okay lah, the first few times is fine. But after a while, it got a little bit much. And, like I said, it probably took away from a lot of what the wrestlers were trying to do. I think back to Puerto Rico. Yes, the crowd was hyped. The crowd was there, cheering in the right spots, booing in the right spots, elevating the experience. Mm. Here, if they are cheering every damn thing Mm -hmm. and singing to, quote-unquote, mundane moments, Mm -hmm. it's almost like they try to take over the show. Okay, that's a fair point. That's mm. a fair point. Uh, I, I've kind of let the you know reactions and the emotions and the crowd reactions kind of sink in over the last couple of days. And I do agree with you uh, to a certain extent because yep. as great as the crowds was, the reactions was, the mm. chance was, I don't think it's sustainable for the long term. No, like, it's not. You can't do that kind of reaction every single week on Raw. Yeah. And I believe even if you were from France and you love wrestling so much, nope. you can't do this like if they go to uh, WWE comes to Raw, France like four or five times yeah. a year. No. It's, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be the whole AEW going to Chicago yeah. problem, right? No, it, it's a happening, right? It's yeah. Uh, it, it's not something you can sustain, which is fine. They're not gonna go to France all the time. So it's fine yeah. for one off events. My whole thing is I think they tried to take over the show a little bit too much, whereas mm-hmm. Puerto Rico did not. Yeah, Puerto I agree. Rico, like, okay, like, I remember this other thing, like, they kept chanting, this is awesome. I'm like, if everything is awesome, then nothing is awesome. Mm-hmm. And another reason why maybe the, you know, Puerto Rico crowd um, felt a bit more, like, in tune and more, mm. uh, there's more purpose to how they chant yeah. is because they actually had 
hometown heroes and wrestlers from Puerto Rico that they can can kind of center their attention towards. Yeah, your Damien Priest, your Zelina Vega, Bad even Bunny. Even Bad Bunny. Yeah, yeah even yeah. Bad Bunny. But I think for 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 France, they they don't have any connection in terms of a wrestler there. They love wrestling mm. and they just want to kind of like showcase their culture and uh, you know yeah. say like hey you know we are awesome as well so maybe there's also a bit of that in yeah. the way they went about their chanting maybe that's their issue yeah. over there yeah. so yeah. Uh, okay to me okay so as we go through the card right I realize mm. what it is that I had an issue with mm. the bad matches which there were actually quite a few unfortunately <laughs> were elevated by the chanting in fact, mm-hmm. I believe one of the matches was bad because of the chanting. The, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, the great match was diminished because it was so distracting. I see, I see. Does that make sense? We'll go through it card by uh, match yeah. by match, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about let's talk about. And also I would like to say mm. I don't mind a five match card if yeah, yeah. every single match is solid and there's stories behind it, but I also feel like <sighs> this event I think would afford to have a bit more matches in my opinion. Yes, yeah. they were solely uh, holding up the whole event based on the one of the eventness of the crowd, the happeningness of the crowd. Like this is the first time, like whoa, you know, this was a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah. I absolutely agree, and I'm very surprised that there was no um pre match, like you know, pre match match, yeah, pre show uh, match. I, I'm surprised there wasn't any, uh, you know, um, semi Zayn, but also, mm. do you realize most of the matches? Were SmackDown wrestlers? Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's why they they didn't want the raw re- raw wrestlers to travel and then like rush back to the states. Maybe that's why. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. So okay, we kick off the night with the Bloodline, Solo Sokoa mm-hmm. and Tamatonga, versus Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. And of course, you had the whole thing where everyone's singing Randy Orton's song, which was amazing. Once again, mm. I did I did not like I I don't want to be that guy. It's like oh, the French crowd suck. It absolutely did not. I would yeah. rather have that than a dead crowd. Yeah, for you know sure, I mean? for sure. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. Just, it's just I feel like Puerto Rico was better because they were there with the energy but they didn't distract from the match itself. Okay, back to this. Mm. <sighs> what? Uh, I, I, okay. Why, the Mr. Whole, Young? Why? The whole idea of Tamatonga is, and, and Solo Sokoa, right? It's like, oh, they are the savage bloodline. They are this new version that are more savage, right? They, they call themselves the rogue bloodline, apparently. Yeah, whatever they call themselves. Uh. Mm. I feel like they because and I also get it like some people explain like it said like oh it's Kevin Owens and Randy or their main event guys they can't be beating them like you know handily but I felt like most of the match they were getting their asses kicked they being the bloodline yeah yeah and this is an issue because we've seen Samo, uh, Samo Joe, like, Solo Sikoa yeah. getting beaten up being the flunky for so long yeah. and I thought with this new reinvention in his character like he's yeah. pushed up further as the, the so-called leader mm. there will be a change in how they book him yeah but no he's still getting his ass beaten up. yeah and you know uh, to bleed on to that tamatonga himself also like I, oh yeah i was exciting i didn't really watch too much of god but i was mm. like okay let me see what you got in the ring mm-hmm. there i saw nothing like i didn't get a better sense of who he was you know this <sighs> whole thing of he tried to ram kevin owens with a car like mm-hmm. okay i'm let down this path of he's a savage i'm a savage yeah. <laughs> uh, do you remember that song? Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, Pandemic course. times, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't. No, that's exactly like what Rishi says. I don't see the specialness or the savageness. In fact, this match made them look weak. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, let's be really honest. God, Tama Tonga, they were mid cutters in New Japan, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was hoping when they go to WWE, they will highlight them in a different way. Like Tama Tonga yeah. was menacing in the lead up to Backlash, mm. but during the match itself, I was expecting him to be like cleaning house all the time yeah. or like saving Solo Sikoa, uh, maybe having a stare down with Randy and then Randy mm. is like a bit threatened which is like makes him even more of a bigger deal, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, but you're right. None of that. He was just beaten up. <laughs> I, and I hated the fact that it was a street fight. You know? Oh, like, really? Okay. It, because it started straight out as a street fight, right? Yeah. Like I get where they're going like, oh, these teams, these guys, they hate each other so much they can't be contained. But mm. like, why not have them wrestle a normal match and then Halfway through, Solo and Tama start losing it and then go savage, you know? And then uh, so- slowly escalate to that because essentially what you had here was a schmoz right from the beginning. They fight everywhere, punch kick, punch kick. It just felt like a big mess the whole way through. Yeah, but if they were to start a match as a normal match and then wouldn't that result in a DQ? 
unless you're telling me that oh then Nick Aldis or yeah. Ad- Adam Pierce come out and say hey you know what let's continue yeah. the match but it's a street fight yeah and, and then it devolves right like I honestly or even if it's a DQ I don't care have it be a DQ and then have Tama and Solo like take out chairs, take out freaking knives, mm. not knives. Uh, but you know, like then <laughs> nice. well, have have because the whole idea is they will go overboard, ma. Right? Yeah, like yeah, there's a sure. line. Like I feel like the whole idea was there's a line that these two will cross. Like vehicular yeah. assault for yeah, crying yeah. out loud, right? Yeah. But that Kevin Owens and Red New Orton, yeah, they are tough guys, they are crazy wild guys, but even they won't cross that line. But None of that sort of played out and they just felt like uh, mid cutters. Gotcha, gotcha. They needed to rent some sort of like car, run over Kevin Owens or something. Do something crazy like Like, that. Like I didn't feel any like... And you know, maybe it's... We blame Paul Heyman. Because of the way Paul Heyman has been reacting, right? Like Uh. did you see the whole match you had this like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was acting his balls up. Man. He was like clutching my, clutching his pearls. Like, oh my God. Yeah. But his reaction didn't fit what was happening. They weren't mm. savage. This is nothing new. Yeah. You know? Okay. Like, if anything, I thought they would actually have some blood. Like, make mm. Orton bleed. Make, Ke- make Kevin Owens bleed. Bleed from the internal bleeding, the, the mouth. Something like that. Just to yeah. give it the savagery. There was no savagery. And then, let's talk about the finish. Okay. Let's go for it. Um, uh, what do you think? What do you think about the debut uh, of Camacho of uh, <laughs> Tangaloa? Tangaloa, yes. I think he's he has the same problem as Bobby Lashley and Omas. He looks oh, really? like a very friendly guy, <laughs> <laughs> like a very friendly Samoan uncle. Is it? Yes. Oh, I, when he God. came out, I was like, "Why is he like? He's like trying to hide his sm- like he's trying to." He knows he's not supposed to smile, but he smiled. Maybe he was just caught up in the moment. Yeah. But well, do you see there was like another reverse camera angle where he was a bit late yes. to, to kind of breaking up the pinfall? I saw. that It was a fan cam, right? Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. he was supposed to break up the pin. But then mm-hmm. the referee, I think he was ah, F it. Like, he just, he pretended to, you know, be pulled out. Yeah, He was yeah, half yeah. a second off, yeah. I see. Well, the thing about it is, right, everyone and their mother thought it was going to be Jacob Fatou. Yeah. Right, yeah. and no, but okay, but that's fine though. Like you're swerving the internet crowd, right? Yeah, so, I'm uh... okay with them swerving it or like you know delaying Jacob. Because to me, Jacob Fatu is the main event. I tell you, once he comes in, right? Yeah. In my opinion, everything changes mm. because whatever we wish Solo Sikoa was, I'm pretty sure Jacob Fatu Jacob. can do it so much better. Yeah, and he really is a savage. You yeah, know? <laughs> so I think he can elevate the whole story now. But my question is right. So what does this mean for the Rogue Bloodline? Is Tama and Tangaloa are gonna recreate God. Essentially, they're gonna be a tech team. Yeah. Um. Uh, are they? So is Solo still gonna be the main guy, or is Solo? So I just wanna understand that dynamic. As yeah. of now, to me, I consider Tangaloa like a B, B player or like supporting character. Not not like a big deal that he re- um debut. Yeah, it's like a C plus, and maybe that's why they brought him out in the first match, lah. You know, it's like okay, lah. I just get this debut out of the way. Um, yeah. I think maybe we've expected a lot from the Bloodline. So mm. to expect, like you know, the next level is like, uh, I I don't know. It just to me, it felt very flat. Is it maybe because you're getting vibes of like you know Avengers or like Marvel Phase Four or like you know? Yep. No, that that's a very good um <laughs> description. You know, like after the entire End Game sequence at WrestleMania, like how can you top that, right? And yeah. maybe we should temper our expectations. Now we are in a rebuilding phase. Uh, in Papa H, we trust, so we will let him cook for a little while. But yeah, yeah. Uh- I'm I don't hate the match and I think that you know I'm still intrigued in the bloodline. Uh but I think it's very important that we do we give them the same patience that we give yeah, uh, sure. all this while because they have delivered. So maybe remember last year when Cody lost mm. and then Roman disappeared for two, three months? Yeah. We thought like, ah, oh, it's going to be like boring. They're going to drop the ball yeah. on the blind. And then it picked up with that whole tribal combat. Then yeah. tribal combat sucked, remember? Yeah, and we yeah. thought like, ah, oh, <laughs> this is going to suck again. Yeah, and yeah. then we got LA. Now. So I, I I feel like, you know, maybe if this was a down spot, then definitely something great is coming up on the horizon, in my opinion. So look, I don't mind if this was a down spot, but the whole card was down spots. That's mm-hmm. the other issue here. As an event as a whole, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, and I will reflect this in my rating earlier. I have two ratings for this entire thing. Go for it. Okay. We'll yeah. talk about it towards the end of our ratings. Okay. So talk about next match for us. Uh, okay. So Bailey also, how are you doing, Irvin? I think he just joined us. He just chimed in on the draft. So I think he's a bit late. <laughs> he's uh, watching. 
It, it's all good. We talk about the draft. We talk about AW Dynamite at the start of the show, and now we're talking about Backlash. Bro, he, our review. He can't hear us. He's still watching the draft part. Oh, okay, uh, he okay, hasn't no caught problem. up yet. Somebody let him know. Uh, all right. So let's uh, move on. I guess to Bailey, Naomi, and Tiffany Stratton. The only thing I thought during this match was, "Ooh, mm. Tiff is not ready," or they just have no chemistry. She's mm. ready, as in she's over. Yes. Yep. But the match itself was like a mess. Um, I want to say something as well. She wasn't the only female wrestler that exposed herself during this event, in my opinion. Wait, wait, exposed in what way? Because you're talking about Tiffy. You're talking about no, no, you know no. some, some of these very beautiful... I mean, anyway, yes. Exposed their lack of in-ring experience. Okay, oh, That's I wonder I who, who else are you going to say? All right, we'll just wait, just wait. But for the for the context of this match, mm. we all know Tiffany Stratton, you know, has been a fan favourite. Ever yeah. Actually, I, I, I want to take credit for giving Tiffany Stratton the rub, you know? You gave her what rub? You rub her? What? Yes, I gave her a good rub. I mean, not just me, Diff as well, and the rest of the Australian crowd at Indonesia oh, Chamber. That's what I meant. Right. Oh, okay. Woo! Yeah. What I meant is like, I felt like, honestly, that was the first time. I, mm. I guess she, she, since she appeared on the main roster, that suddenly she was like, holy crap, you know, there's this fan base that is yeah. really supportive of her, like what she does, thinks she's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And that momentum has carried on throughout past WrestleMania mm. and now in Backlash. And the French audience was ready for Tiffy time. It's international. Yep. And like everyone was excited for her. But then, do you realize the whole point of this match? While it is to highlight Bailey to you know, cement her championship, mm. they had Naomi there. Everything in my mind was... like I was just thinking to myself, like actually, right, this whole point of this match uh, is WWE officials trying to help Tiffany Stratton guide herself through this triple threat match. Yeah. So Put her, put, put her in the ring with two veterans, right? Yeah, yeah. Trying to put her over and, and get her over. And, you know, like, training also lah. Yes, correct, correct. And I felt like it. if we had seen it or it came with the expectation that this was what it was, mm. like a young rookie trying to establish herself against, like, two accomplished stars and she yep. can do big spots here and there, but she just gets her ass kicked most of the time. Yep. That would have been fine. But I felt like I think WWE might have pushed her to the moon too fast. I don't even think the officials pushed her though. That's the thing. I think the fans anointed yeah. her. She's just not ready for it. So I actually like give kudos to like the bookers, whoever's mm-hmm. booking her. It's like, yeah, get her out there, get her the cheers, get her the experience, most importantly, but she's not yeah. ready to represent the brand. Yeah, yeah. And and you can tell. There's nothing to, against uh, her athleticism. No, There's no. nothing against her look. She has... Ev- she's like... You know what she is? She's like Goldberg, bro. <laughs> Come okay. into WCW. Everything perfect. Don't insult her, lah, bro. She's like Goldberg. No, no, no. I, I wouldn't even say Goldberg is better than her in the ring, for sure. She's mm. definitely better. But what I'm saying is... There's a bit of that greenness. Yeah. And she kind of needs to battle through it, like you say. Working with Becky Lynch's of the world. Mm. uh, Bailey. She will need reps... And maybe this was the first time where we kind of like, oh, okay, we need to maybe slow down the hype train on her a bit. Yeah, yeah. Let her get comfortable on the main roster, do her thing true, first. True, true. Yeah. Uh, Rishi brings up a very good point. Um, Rishi says Naomi looked like a sucker. She lost the match immediately. So happy for Bailey, hug her and all that kind of stuff. Remember, mm, not mm. not even a hint of a turn. Like, where's the competitive spirit? This is for their women's championship, right? No, I get that point. I absolutely agree. Not only that, Naomi here, we mentioned she was su- kind of just like the the other veteran in there. It's like, okay, Bailey and Naomi can have a match. Tiffany Stratton, you just come in for spots. That's why yeah. it was. Yeah, I agree. And also the problem with Naomi is, Naomi came in as a TNA women's champion, right? Mm. Immediately got booked like a... Like a jobber. <laughs> like a jobber. Lost yeah. to Tiffany Stratton. And then, yeah, she had that whole thing against damage control, double team up with all those black women. Mm. And then suddenly, she gets pushed back to the forefront as like a main event. So it's like very inconsistent booking as well. She she has become the, the Dolph Ziggler. Oh, we need somebody with some sort of credential, yeah. we'll put you there. But we don't actually want to push you. You yeah. know, that that's the vibe. But at least the French crowd gave her a, a deserved, oh, like, yeah. you know, intro, like, you know. The crowd Entrance. made made her intro felt like she's the biggest star in yeah. the world, right? Yeah. And the crowd elevated this match because yeah. this match, like I said, without the crowd, oof, this was actually quite like there were a few spots that were quite rough, lah. The timing. If I if I was a wrestler, right, mm. I would love performing for this crowd because oh yeah, yeah. 
everything that I did sort of felt validated, you know? <laughs> see, but see, that's that's the thing. Like, um, that that's why I don't think that this was the greatest crowd of all time. I think Puerto Rico is because it's like, you get that false sense of security that you're doing great when actually yeah. it's a subpar match, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. So, I mean, it's like they are more like a supportive crowd as opposed to like a discerning yeah. crowd, right? Yeah, and... You have to, as a performer, obviously you're going to love a crowd like that. And it, I love, once again, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying it's a false sense of security. Yeah, yeah. And I think if you watch the match with a critical eye, it was, uh, was mm-hmm. kind of sapa. If you take the highlights of the entrances and moves and the reactions, why, you look like a mega star. Yeah. Everybody looked great. And that's what it was great for. Yeah. We've been talking about two out of the three women in the match a lot. But mm. like, Bailey? what do you think of Bailey? Bailey, like I said, she is the good hand. Mm. She's now in the good hand role. She's there to make other people put on good matches to make the next generation. She, I feel, doesn't even have a story of her own right now. Mm. I mean, she really finished, quote unquote, finished her story with damage control. And that was uh, a bad story to begin with. Uh, so, do you, okay, so the thing about Bailey, Bailey's a bit of a conundrum. She has a great connection with the fans. Mm. Um, we all don't have anything bad to say about her in-ring work. Yeah. Uh, but it seems as if the the WWE officials, even some certain sections of the fans, including maybe some of us, mm. think that she's like, ah, she's okay lah. Yeah. But there's nobody like, oh, damn, I'm going to die for Bailey. Bailey is like my number <laughs> one girl. You know what I mean? Hey, the... Uh, 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 Bailey, oh, ah. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that, that was yeah. quite loud, okay? That was fun. But that's a football chant. That's nothing to do with like... I sure. mean, they love chanting that for Bailey. I'm pretty sure they love singing, yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I get your issue. Like, okay, Bailey is to me right. Like, you know, when Bret Hart first won the title in '91, mm, yeah, against uh, Bob Backlund, yeah, like he was just a very bland, good guy yeah. champion. That he haven't developed that age yet, you know. Yeah. Uh, Bailey has just returned to being coming a baby face, so mm. you know she will need some time to kind of get used to it. But the that feisty Bailey that she was as a heel felt very, very interesting. So I do not know how she can kind of translate that into a good girl character. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Everything settles after the draft. I mean, you got Nia Jax over on SmackDown now. Oh, so yes. If you think about oh. it, I think it is kind of a fresh matchup. You know, Bailey versus Nia Jax. Even though I know a lot of people don't like Nia Jax, she's always a threat, right? Bro, Nia Jax has been interesting, has been yeah, improving. Yeah. This so year's Nia Jax versus Bailey, probably what we're going to see in the future. Mm-hmm. Ah, Naomi turning, should she turn? Like, is Naomi this whole, like, glow, smile, smile, is this, like, overplayed to the max? I feel like she can still be the very sympathetic baby face, mm. but uh, she, she, Daya Jax needs to, like, destroy her or something, like, to make an example out of her so that she can further her storyline with Bailey. But you're right, like, Naomi is going to be a big part player, or at least a supporting character, not the main star, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, uh... But- <laughs> Talking about bit part players made to look like a main star, Jay Uso. Oh come on! Oh. Are you being, are you being unnecessarily unfair to me? No yeet, bro. I'm camp. No yeet. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, it's all. F- I'm working the crowd here. Uh, Jay, oh, okay. <laughs> Jay, Jay Uso versus Damian Priest. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, talk about a crowd elevating a, essentially a no heat match into like you know a big deal, bro. What did I say about this crowd elevated every single match except for one match? Uh, okay, we can Look, talk about it. Like, like, you just hit the nail on the head. This yeah. match was a Raw main event. Yeah. It was a SmackDown yeah. main event. It was just like, oh, okay lah. Like, you know, it TV, happened. TV, TV show main event. Yeah, it was a TV match, right? Jay looked amazing in his intro. He looked like a main event star. But mm-hmm. we talked about it. With Jay Uso, right? He works well with a great storyline. But when he wrestles, he's like, uh, like okay, like, we don't need to watch the match. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was kind of playing out to the crowd doing the ye- and yeah, yeah. doing that. Ye- like, again, right? You, if you overplay it, people will get sick of it soon. Yeah. So I like when he does the entrance, yeah. he celebrates with that movement. But mm. that don't, I don't know, don't make it part of the, the in-ring performance. Yeah. Oh, in my okay, opinion. you know what? I will counter that by saying I think it's okay P-O- because he only did it at the start and he mm. did it to annoy Damien Priest, right? It's so, a bit of the story. La, this yeah, it, yeah it, and it's also a bit of crowd interaction. It makes the character mm. more over than he is. The problem is you'll have to wrestle after that. And yeah. for whatever reason, that's his weakest point. 
once he starts wrestling and he used to be cool because he had his brother to do all these cool tag team moves. They had the mm. tag team synergy and that was exciting to watch. Now he has to handle and hold the bag by himself. Mm, mm. The, the, and the thing, you know what they say about tag team matches, right? Mm. You get to split the load. Yeah. You can rest more. Uh, you know, you don't have to exert yourself all around. And yep. you can mask a bit of your flaw. Say, for example, if I'm not a high flyer, I can get my brother to do the high flyer yeah. stuff. Yep. If like I'm I'm not really a technical person, I can get my technical, you know, I can just come in for the big moves, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh is this a case of Jay being exposed as a single stressor and he kind of needs to get the reps in? What, but what, okay. Uh we've talked about this before, how the Usos, even when he was in a tag team with Jimmy, right? Yeah. Yeah. They are fun to watch. But once mm. the bell rings, it's kind of the rinse repeat situation they are not for whatever reason it is they are not very like like when you watch for example AJ Styles match when you watch a Seth Rollins match you, they draw you in they know how to tell a story in the ring mm-hmm. the Usos are better at telling the story outside of the ring does that make sense yeah yeah that's the thing right I, it reminds me of something Jim Cornette likes to say about you know the Usos so he said mm. like he loves all the promos yeah. that Jay does he loves all the interaction Everything he did with Sami Zayn, mm. he's like, oh, conflict, blah, blah, blah. He's acting. Everything is great. Yeah. Just switch off the TV when he starts wrestling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but the same applies to both Usos. That's why their match at WrestleMania was such a snoozer. Because, oh my God, now the two of them are fighting each other. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, I, I feel like at some point, Jimmy's going to come back. They're going to go back to being a tag team. I think... Mm. Which, which I'm fine, right? Like you know, you know when Jeff Hardy had that run. Yeah, he went, went, went and did his singles run for a yeah. bit. He was yeah. fighting Triple H, blah blah. Jeff Hardy, and then he immediately slowly went back to Matt Hardy. Yeah, I don't hate it, but at least now you know that we can at least tell Jimmy and Jay apart. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, one but, is Yeet, one is no Yeet. Yeah. Yeah, but I I feel like for his sake, like, I want him to win a title. Like, give mm. you an IC championship run or something. Like, at least to validate his singles run. Because we got to give him kudos for being able to, you know, pull himself away and stand up, stand out mm. on his own as a single star. But if he's, the worst thing about him is his wrestling. Mm. Like, I don't know. Like, to me, wrestling, you can learn to get better or like get the reps in. But everything else that he has, the yeah, star yeah. power, you can't teach that. Well, Okay. Me. And you can't teach that. Is this a hot take mm. when I say that it was just a matter of a choice? Okay. That who is getting the main event? If in a booking meeting, they decided, mm. okay, Jimmy Uso is going to be Jimmy main event. Main event Jimmy. Oh, you're saying that it didn't really matter which Uso did it. Yeah. I think they are mm. essentially the same person. Oh, dear and, God. And it's just, Jay could have played the Jimmy role as well as Jimmy could have played the J role with all the bookings surrounding it, is that a hot take? Or do you agree? I, I don't agree, bro. I don't agree mm. because I feel like Jay has established a connection with the audience that Jimmy still hasn't been able to do. No, because but it, that, this, that's because of the story that was told. My yeah. argument is if you swap the roles and, okay, today you're, you're supposed to act this way, this one's supposed to act that way, I believe that they will be equally over in the alternate reality where Jimmy is the eating, eating okay. one. Okay, you, you, you think of it this way. If Jay can still sustain all his, you know, all his, uh, you know, connection with the crowd even until now, mm. away from the bloodline and all that, then I think that he actually deserves the kudos because he did it in, in himself. Like, yeah, even with the booking and all that kind of stuff, yeah. fine. Okay, okay. Irv- Irvin brings up a very good point. Cannot, because Jimmy got more DUI. Rishi also <laughs> said... <laughs> Okay, oh, the DUI's got in the way. Okay. Okay, so it's Point like a, taken. It's a criminal issue. La. <laughs> He's always not there. <laughs> so, so Jay is the more responsible one. Jay more, so Jay is the more reliable. He's the, <laughs> the Matt Hardy of the situation. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, they wrestle the same. At least with Matt and Jeff, right? They have very different wrestling styles. Mm, so mm. they can stand out. Jimmy and Jay, they're exactly the same. Anyway, yeah. um, Damien Priest won. Okay, so it's very interesting. This whole like... Hey, hey, don't interrupt the match. Don't inter- Don't like with uh, JD Funko, with Finn Balor, right? Where do you think they're going with this? Because I haven't watched Raw, but I saw the clips. He apologized to them. So where are we mm-hmm. going with this Judgment Day thing? 
Well, I don't know, man. Uh, well, what happened on Raw is actually uh, Damien Priest apologized. Yeah, yeah. To 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 them, so they kind of like are uh, on like an uneasy alliance. They they squashed the beef, lah. They were yeah, like, oh, they squashed uh, the beef. But I think you know you're gonna they're gonna kind of it's gonna be a long drawn out story, lah, for sure, lah. Mm. For sure, yeah. So okay, are we seeing a breakup of the Judgment Day in the future, or are they trying to do a Judgment Day civil war like they did with the Bloodline? Uh, that's the thing, right? How many storylines can you rinse and repeat and copy? Yeah. Uh? You know what I want to do? Mm. I want I I want Dominic Mysterio to kind of play a part in like being ousted or like screwing up or like taking over from Damian Priest even. Like I want mm. that. Yeah, because uh, I, I, they had to go about it a different way in how they break up the team. Uh. Yeah, because it cannot be the same, right? Well, I mean, he can start by cheating on mommy because yeah, that is the rumor. Yeah, so we, we story, saw right? on, was it on Raw where he left the room and then Liv Morgan left the same room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, but yes. But it was in the background and only the nerds, uh, the, the one who's paying attention caught it. There was some security footage or some No, some no, it's an interview. Was it was oh, an yeah, interview. Yeah. So it was, I forgot who was being interviewed, but in the background, you could mm-hmm. see, and you know, now we are in the era of Easter eggs. So, mm. yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. But hey, you know what? I, I'm okay with Damien being a champion as of now, but... Mm. He needs to establish that run. Like, what? How does he become dominant? Is it gonna be like you know lost in the shuffle of Judgment Day? Can he stand out on his own? So, because to to me, this was two mid card yeah. or upper mid card guys challenging for the title. You know. So could it be a situation where he feels exactly that? It's like okay, it's time for me to prove my campion. I liked it when they announced him as uh, Senor Campion or something like that, lah. Campion, El Campion. Com- El Campion, the champion, right? So yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. presentation wise. So, is it a case of the ju- rest of Judgment Day keep trying to disturb in his matches, but he's like, I want to win it on my own because you know, and then that's how he slowly turns face. I, I yeah, I think we're gonna see a Damien uh, baby face run. I think eventually mm. that's the that's the goal, and the uh, Judgment Day, you know exiling him or like ousting him I think that would be interesting okay but you see here's the thing right how do you exile him without costing him the title I Why feel not? like Finn costing the title la. huh but <laughs> costing I mean the title yeah. yeah so wait but then if he loses the title then he's no longer the champion then like a bit sad right to me him winning the title is really the accomplishment I never foresee or thought that he was gonna have a long reign with mm. it to okay. me, he's holding the belt until maybe Drew wins it or mm, CM Pong. Pong. You know what I mean? So he's just a two, three month champion, hey, in my honest bro, bro. opinion. Div Royalty is in the chat. You watch what you say. Hey. You watch what you say. El Campeon's biggest fan is here, okay? I, I completely understand Div's love for Damien. You know, <laughs> I, he is the bisexual undertaker. <laughs> you know. But come on, you know, like. Unless, okay, unless he proves me wrong, somehow yeah. he gains fire in his championship run, he becomes mm. a big deal, then great, right? Mm. But as of now, I don't see him becoming that guy, that number one star on Raw. Mm. Uh, Dave mentioned that Carlito came to JD for help on Raw and Damien was not happy. So maybe Carlito is the one who, you know? Yeah. Car- Carlito was brought back by the uh, Dominic Mysterio and I saw that segment. Mm. And I think Damien was like, hey, you're the guy that screwed me in that match with Bad Bunny last year. I haven't forgotten. So, that's oh, that. so okay. they play on that storyline from a year back. You know, nice like nice call back. I mean, yeah. Uh, it could be a case of Carlito joins Judgment Day, they oust Damien Priest and then we have a mid-card faction. Uh, <laughs> over there. Uh, shall we move on? Yes, for sure. Let's go. Okay, Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill versus the Kabuki Warriors. Yes. Oh my god. Um, what are we watching? The AEW Women's Division here? What's going on? Uh- <laughs> so, so when I said that there's another girl that exposed herself, right? Mm. This was the match. This but was the who match. though? Who? Jade? Okay. I don't know whether you've paid attention to the match. At one point, right? I believe there was a botch because... Uh, Kyrie wasn't supposed to be the legal uh, competitor. She was supposed to tag out. Bro, there were a lot of botches. Yeah, but including this one, that one. This one stood out because I think Jade definitely memorized the match or memorized oh. the sequence. Yeah. And then when that thing happened, technically it was supposed to be uh, Asuka. Asuka doing the entire sequence with her. Yeah. So now it was Kyrie kind of like switching this position and you can tell the match completely fell, fell apart. apart because Jade yeah. Kage didn't know what to do until Kyrie <laughs> tagged Asuka in. Yeah. No, there was so like, dude, like to your point, I know exactly which moment because it was the ref yelling. It's like, no, 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 no. she's not the legal woman. And then yeah. they like, 
had this moment of confusion and I don't yeah, I, I yeah. don't know if the crowd was too loud as well and maybe they couldn't hear what was mm. going on, right? Mm. There was a moment then Asuka had to come in, you know, I saw her lean outside to talk to Bianca uh, yeah, to yeah. Re- restart everything. Wow, that whole... They were openly communicating with yeah, each other at that point. That, because the crowd was too loud. The last quarter of the match was an absolute... <laughs> Mess. It fell completely apart. And to your point, yes, I think Jade Cargill showed that she cannot call on the fly. She yeah, still yeah. needs to be in there with Bianca. That's why she was there in Bianca with Bianca. Unfortunately, where it all fell apart was when she was in the ring at that moment doing the moves. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't blame like Jade. I, I think it's fair in her current position yeah. how early she is in her career that she needs to be guided. But like oh man, like there was no plan B, plan C, plan D. No, like, no. Nobody was being a ring general. Like I think if it was Dolph Ziggler, Dolph Ziggler would be like, okay, yeah. you do this, you do that, you do that. But yeah. for some reason, I didn't, I think Kyrie also, we had to yeah. take a share of the blame. Yes, she couldn't, no. She couldn't, uh, you know, book on the fly and like do something yeah. else. Like I agree. Improv. And for all you know, with her accent, her, you know, maybe her English is not so clear. Uh, yeah, Jade yeah. couldn't understand. And the crowd was so loud, they probably couldn't hear half of what was being called. So yeah. everything added to this. That's why when I say, okay, the the crowd elevated the first three matches. This match, the crowd was a massive detriment in a way that it was just super distracting for the performers. This yeah. is not to take away from the performers. They should have done better, right? Yeah, yeah. But well, if if yeah. I was a wrestler and this happened to me, and of course I can't say because you know I'm not a one. And yeah. if there's any wrestlers that listens to this podcast, let us know how you guys will have uh, handled this situation. But if I kind of lost my train of thought, right? Yeah. Wouldn't the most simple thing to do is like okay, do a simple sequence, uh, break apart. Yep. Whether you guys, you know, take a break, somebody walks away, do some reactions, uh, spot or like play to the crowd while you kind of regroup. Yeah. As opposed to trying to do a sequence of complicated moves right after. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you exactly, I mean? right? Uh, just, you know, do a rest hole, brawl a little bit while you... Yeah, yeah. I think a rest hole or something. Uh, yeah, no, it was, it was an absolute... Ma- there were so many points where the wrong person took the pin, the wrong person got the tag, you know, like they were pinning the, the non-legal person. It was just a mess and a half. I will say the final sequence when they finally got it right was very impressive. Like yeah, Kyrie, yeah. you know, she's slightly lighter. So mm-hmm. Jade could do whatever she did. So if you didn't know what, see, here's the other thing. If you didn't know what to look for, maybe you wouldn't have noticed it. Like a yeah. casual would probably have noticed it. They would have felt like the match was a bit off. It was a bit mm-hmm. janky. But for mm. us, we immediately were like, wait a minute, so this is completely off. Yeah. The, the the final sequence is just completely kudos to Jake Kage and her strength, right? Like, yeah, that's true. It, it, it was an awesome sequence and yeah. uh, that, that's why it is. She's great in short spurts yeah. to do all these blockbuster highlight Moves, package yeah. reels. But you can't give her a 20-minute match no. yet, you know? <laughs> no, unless you have somebody in there that will literally talk to her the whole match. Becky Lynch, like, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Becky Lynch Bec- will be yelling spots. Can be Becky Lynch, can be Charlotte Flair. Yeah. Holy shit, bro. Can you remember, like, I think Shawn Michaels said it in an interview when it was uh, his uh, Rick Flair's final match, right? Mm-hmm. And Shawn Michaels was like, just shut up and listen to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, yeah, you you um, you need to have all these ring generals uh, yep. calling the match. And I, I hope she does work with, you know, the likes of Natalia mm. or, like, all these, like, people who, 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 who can do the wrestling part really, really well to yeah. get, get her up to speed. Yeah, but, yeah, she was definitely... <laughs> exposed in a huge way during this match. But once again, the crowd made up for it in that it made it a better deal than it was, but also it probably caused them to actually have a lot of the miscom lah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, wait, Irvin say foreign. You broke my heart. What did I do, bro? What did I say? You broke a heart. You broke Div Royalty's heart talking about Damien Priest being a transitional uh, champion. No lah, guys. Come on. It's just a hot take. Just like how Mr. have so many hot takes. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, you're like, ah. Uh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> does WWE, Irvin says, does WWE need a mid-card women's title? Honestly, I don't think so. Um, no, too many titles really. Don't be yeah. like AEW, please. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and the worst part about AEW is technically the TBS title is not really a mid card. Like, you know, even though we all know it's a mid card title, they don't talk about it as a mid card title. So essentially, you have two main titles, which makes no sense. Yeah. Being defended you know, on the same show. You know what's a mid card title? Uh, the NXT. I believe they have an NXT North American Women's title that they have announced. Right? Did they? Yeah, I believe so. I think, correct me if I'm wrong on the chat, but uh, they, they already have a mid-cut title in NXT. So if you want to do all those like mid-cut shit, just go to NXT. When you're ready for the main event, then come to the main roster. That's my opinion. Yeah, I guess. Uh, okay, let's go to the main event of the evening. Cody Rhodes, AJ Styles. We talked about this before, right? Like, yeah, like, 
it was a match that you knew it was going to be a banger in that the two wrestlers are great mm-hmm. wrestlers, ring generals. Yep. They're going to perform their ass off. Yeah. But ultimately, did you enjoy... Like, it was a great wrestling match. And this was one of those moments where I think the crowd took away from the match. Yeah. Do the you, crowd made it their do, time to shine instead of the wrestlers' time to shine. Do you think the WWE officials knew coming into this show that there was this chant about Phenomena? Is that I, why they booked AJ Styles or was this pure no coincidence? La. It was pure coincidence. Um, mm-hmm. But a happy it, coincidence, right? Yeah, I, I See, I don't think so. I think it distracted from what they were trying to do in the ring. Instead okay. of reacting oohs and ahs to moves yeah. and then trying to tell a story, the crowd was off singing songs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, uh, I am not, you know, so predisposed like you to like be v- very sensitive to the crowd in that sense. I, I was really focused on the in-ring, you know, mm. because to be honest, this is a dream match, right? It is, yeah. This is a Bullet Club match uh, between Bullet Club leaders and also AJ Styles. You know, after I saw his training video before Backlash, mm. bro, I got so hyped for this <laughs> match. This guy is... He, somebody in the comments said he looked like Randy Savage now. <laughs> <laughs> he does a little bit, huh? Yeah. But the, like, like we said, like even before the match, we called it, it was going to be a good match. But where does this go? It kind of goes nowhere, right? Because at yeah. the end of the day, he was a side boss. Cody won. Doesn't seem like there's any continuation here. Yeah. But that's the thing, right? You can't have every single match be like storyline driven. or no, I, I, no. You need to pet... Okay, we are, we are at the very start of Cody's brain, right? Mm. You need to pet the victories up. You need to give him, you know, decent side bosses. This is a B-show PLE after all. Yeah, true. Build up that resume and then you're going to have that, I don't know, whether it's a uh, Randy Orton or like mm. maybe uh, Roman Reigns, Gunther, whatever it is that will kind of headline that big SummerSlam show. But yeah. in between, don't give away all your bullets again. Like I of said, of course, of course, one shot. So I'm fine with them doing a throwaway one-off, just purely great in-ring match. But all five matches were like that. Okay, okay. I I don't mean that all five matches were great wrestling matches. I'm saying that all five matches were kind of like meh, like like no heat, no heat, almost TV show matches. All five of them. Th- that that is why I was so curious why they didn't they do Sami Zayn versus Shaq Gable rematch here. That yeah. was a that that had a great story coming into it. Yeah, like like one match with emotional stakes, right? Like all the matches had very little emotional stakes. That's the thing, right? That was supposed to be the bloodline spot. Mm. The bloodline was supposed to be that storyline. And funnily enough, bro, one year ago at Puerto Rico Backlash, mm-hmm. the bloodline also had a shitty match, if oh. you recall. What was the bloodline match? Uh, I believe it was okay, uh, Roman Reigns was out of the picture and then it was mm. like a three-way uh, it was like a six-man match so you had like Solo and the Usos versus like Sammy oh, uh, Kevin. Kevin was it? I can't remember who's the third guy somebody uh, google it yeah yeah somebody let us know but basically it's a six-man tag and it mm. had no stakes at all yeah. and nobody cared about that match everyone remember all the other shit that happened I think what it is is we are suffering from post end game. <laughs> Uh, like you know, mode right? Like oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. and I I totally get it. Um, the crowd. Okay, let let's get down to our final ratings. Yeah, let's do the ratings right off the bat. I was like, the crowd is gonna plus two to my final rating. Remember my, mm. last 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 month was it Dynasty? You gave them like really really good rating, like eight point five or something. Yeah. yeah, are you gonna grade it on a curve? Are you gonna compare backlash in that sense? Uh, mm, not really. Mm-hmm. I th- no, I, I try to judge each by its own. You, you know what I mean? Okay. And Dynasty had a good crowd. It wasn't as hype as France, but it had a mm-hmm. good crowd and had mm-hmm. great matches highlighted and bookended by that Daniel Bryan and the Swerve match, right? Here, mm-hmm. there was only one decently good wrestled match mm-hmm. and all the matches had no heat. So, mm-hmm. I gave this a 5.5. 5, mm-hmm. But... Plus two for the crowd, 7.5. Only because of the crowd. Without the crowd, you dial the crowd back down. For example, let's say this was done in freaking uh, Minnesota or wherever yeah. the hell, right? Yeah. And yeah. you had a yeah. regular crowd. I think this would have been a 5.5 pay-per-view. PLE, you, sorry. I, I completely agree with you, bro. Like, I... Mm. Honestly, without the crowd, this would yeah. have been a normal raw. Probably have been like five, you know, five point five, like you said. Bro, that's a great way of putting it. This would have been an episode of Raw if not for yeah. the crowd. <laughs> yeah, but I, I give, I'm gonna give it seven. Um, and I'm grading it lower for different reasons than you. I, it was oh. not because of the crowd. I didn't. The, to me, the crowd didn't like 
add or take away. I mean, it great, it greatly made it a more enjoyable watch. So there's mm-hmm. points for that. But I give it seven because, in my opinion, like they didn't have enough matches. Like I felt like, mm. like you said, uh, to your point, the the matches that was on the show were were, were fine for what it was, but. The storyline stakes, the investment wasn't there. No, yeah. And they really, and they actually have great matches with stakes. You know, like again, I keep going back to Sami Zayn and Chad Gable. But to your point, that's a raw um, storyline, right? So I, I get it that they are only doing SmackDown or heavy SmackDown side because they didn't want everybody to fly here, fly there. Yeah, they make it clear to everyone this is a SmackDown exclusive event. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but yeah. you had Damien Priest, ma, so this is not a SmackDown. Exactly. Uh, exclusive event. Yeah. If if it was me, I would have added uh like Sammy and uh Sammy and Chad. Mm. I would have added uh maybe a bit of Gunther mm. or yeah. Gu- they, 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 I know Gunther kind of like broke up with the Gen- uh the the Vinci or whatever shit. Yeah. Could have had a one off match with uh Drew and uh, Sheamus, but mm. I know Drew got injured on Raw. They they kind of explain it, but. What I'm saying is like, I think the card suffered from injury list and unavailability, which yeah. hampered and, the overall quality. And the fallout of WrestleMania. Just everything about it was like, eh. but then again, you look back at last year's, they managed to do a really good pay-per-view last year at yeah, Backlash yeah. in Puerto Rico, even though it was post-WrestleMania as well. Yeah, Maybe yeah. because that WrestleMania's main event was a letdown. And that's why, you yeah. know, yeah. This, Triple, H, the- Triple H has a cheat code, bro. Do you realize or not? Hmm? But when I say a cheat code, meaning like, he can mask like the typical post WrestleMania slump yeah, by yeah. going overseas and doing international shows so yeah. that at least the momentum still remains hot even if like the in-ring stories yeah. are being wrapped up, right? No, 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 that's exactly it. And I think that is the um, leg up that they have working with TKO because TKO opens those doors for them internationally in that way, right? Yeah. So Just, yeah, actually Just, it would make yeah. sense moving on in the future, every time it's post WrestleMania, post Big Four, go, go overseas. To yeah, yeah. To worry. yeah. yeah. I, if you take a look at the schedule, right? Like we mm. we just went through uh, Leon France. At the end of the month, at the end of May, you will have King and Queen of the Ring Saudi Arabia, the yeah. usual uh, Saudi show. Early June, it will be Clash at the Castle. Yeah, right. Glasgow, I believe our one of our dear friends on the chat, Gaddafi, will be there. Mm. Uh, right after that, uh, even Money in the Bank is gonna be in Toronto. So it's still gonna be out of the US, right? Well, I mean, it's North America. Okay, la. To me, North America is one territory for them. But on yeah, its own, I, la, yeah. yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, and then and then they come back for Cleveland SummerSlam, and then mm. Bash at Berlin. So like, they're gonna have this chunk where it's just gonna be hot crowds, you know, yeah. going forward. So and you know yeah. what it also does for the US crowd? What makes them crave it too? Because now they are there, quote unquote, a little bit less. People were shitting on uh, Raw today because it was like, ah, now you know we are back in the US crowd. Ah, because <laughs> boring. The reaction, boring. boring. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you yeah. know, it's, yeah, WWE, they are thinking globally now, which is great for all of us, obviously, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. it's great for us because we have different timings to watch now. It isn't always a Monday morning or some weird ass yeah, timing yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so it's great. It's great. Bro, bring it back to Australia again. That was the best timing oh, yeah. for all of us. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. We didn't, didn't have to like sleep super late. That kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, once again, going back to the whole, as a casual, I have to think about it, like, you know, I try to think about it as a, you know, someone who only watches WWE once in a while, or maybe you just see the social media clips. Mm-hmm. France made it look like such a big deal. Yeah. That okay. is, that's why I gave it plus two. Because yeah. forget about all the botches or the miscoms and the whatever, right? As mm. a product, WWE seems fresh and hot and yeah. happening. Yeah. AEW seems boring, dull, rehashing old shit. It's all about perception, bro. It I is. Think if if, it if is. we are here, we we are observers, right? We watch yep. every time, and we are quite, quite you know, th- you know, regular consumers. But mm. if I were to show like a random guy from Singapore, like, hey, bro, you know, there there was this wrestling show that happened. Show them backlash. Show them all the chants. Yeah, yeah. They would yeah. be interested no. to check it out again for sure. So okay, it's the same as if you watch. Um, uh, you, if you compare Marvel, Endgame, Marvel, uh, Avengers, Infinity War to some indie show, you know, yeah. you will definitely have a crowd that are like, oh, you know, this Disney, this Marvel stuff is such corporate bullshit. I'm so sick of it. It sucks. Blah, blah, blah. There mm. are always going to be people like that who want to go and skew towards the alternative a little mm. bit more. Yeah. yeah. But the main audience who you're trying to grab Mm-hmm. will always gravitate to the thing that looks bigger, better yeah. budget, more marketing. Agreed. It is just the nature of humanity. <laughs> Nothing wrong with uh, enjoying indie movies, but yeah. 
they are not competing on the same playing field. Yeah, it's a They're different just playing field. Mm. Yeah, uh, but at the end of the day, like you know, we we want them to have something that will make us take our attention away. But if they have to resort to TMZ style drama, then oh yeah, uh, yeah. so be it lah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But anyway, you know what? I I think overall it was a fun weekend for us mm. wrestling fans watching Backlash, and now you know we are on the road to King and Queen of the Ring. So there's gonna be all these bracket and tournaments. Yeah. So you know this is WWE's way of doing their you know continental classic or uh, like their freaking uh, you know Owen Hart Cup or whatever okay it is right yeah at least this time around the King and Queen of the Ring I do believe they have a title shot so there are stakes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that's good that's always good uh and, and it, it's actually a very packed month in May because AEW so they are you know going towards double or nothing mm. and local wrestling as well I believe next week SPW Ignition and the week after that. Preple Max uh, Fight, Fight Club. Club. Yeah, so... Whew, we, uh, bro, our content never ends in a way, bro. If you oh, absolutely it, right? not. And we love it. And that's why we are yeah. here every single week, be it recorded or live. And as always, talking about live, thank you so much for hanging out in the chat. If you're still here, uh, I tell you what, in just a few moments, we are going to send you to a little conversation we had with Sean. He is this incredible collector of WWE Pro Wrestling memorabilia. Mm-hmm. His Is his collection like the biggest in Singapore it might just be I don't know anybody else who I has a have, bigger collection I have a feeling we might have found the rarest WWE collector in, in, the, in, the, in, all, Singapore. in Singapore history bro, probably yeah right like so, dude and amazingly right like you know he, he, his wife supports him and everything okay we'll let him tell uh, uh, you all that kind of stuff in just a little while so big shout mm-hmm. out to Sean I'm sure mm-hmm. you've seen his video on social media but we're going to chat with him in just a few moments once again though we got to give a big shout out to Mirage Advisory we are in the Mirage era right now thank you so very much for sponsoring the podcast we know you guys love wrestling as much as mm-hmm. we do we thank you for letting us do our thing spread the joy of wrestling while they do their thing being the best there is the best there was the best there ever will be do us a favor you guys okay go to Mirage mm-hmm. Advisory's Instagram page if you haven't already and drop them a follow yeah man their CTA is very simple they just want your follows they just want us to check out their product for them mm. and in return we will promote them they will promote us with our wrestling stuff so it's a, it's a win-win connection and partnership right hey, there yeah? when wrestling fans get together to support each other mm-hmm. anything is possible bro yeah, there you we, go. We, there we you. gotta support, we gotta be each other's bras. We support yeah. each other. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a very interesting way of putting it, Mr. Young, but sure. Go uh, for it. Uh, wait, spe- wait, speaking of uh, supporting brands, okay, we, I won't be remiss if we don't give a shout out. I don't know whether you can go back to our Instagram profile page. Okay. Because uh, a couple of months ago, you know, when we did the Kick to the Gut Award 2023, oh, we yes. actually created special merch for those people who attended the events, right? Mm. Uh, we actually did like uh, design stickers of our brand and our logo. We had s- stupid stuff, quotes like, you know, Tony Khan, best booker of the year. Or, uh, oh. Foreign, for sure, for sure. Like we had all these stupid nonsense that we came up with and we gave it as like decals and stickers to our uh, patrons who attended the event, right? Yes, uh, yes. And, and, you know, shout out to flow.roll. That's their Instagram. They do uh, customized special printing. So if you want to do any custom designs, printed stuff for your own brand, your own company, your own OTOT, your own stuff, you can reach out to them. So, a couple of our listeners, right? Muhammad Daniel, I think uh, Zaf as well, all DM me and was like, where can I buy this? Mm. <laughs> where can I buy this? So, uh, I, we have good news and we have bad news. Can we just say the bad news first? So, the bad news first, we actually created this for specifically the Kick to the Gut Awards, you know? The, the year-end awards that we did correct, last year, yes. Correct. We had no intention to sell it uh, mm. because, you know, we, we, uh, we do not know who will actually buy this. But mm. apparently, now there's demand for it. <laughs> and here's the now here's the good news, right, Mr. Young? Can we yes. reveal this to everyone? Okay. We still have some leftover decals from the awards. There, there you go. go. Look at this. Event. Sticker packs. Correct. I believe, Mr. You said we have like... 12 we have left. still we have 12 left but here's the thing you know if we need more we can go to flow roll and get more right correct correct but the only thing that they say is like they for them you know we need to order in bulk we need yeah, to do a mass course. order so we can't like uh, one person say I want one they can order it, it, it will cost a lot of money so mm. luckily we still, have, we still have some leftover stock if you want to get your hands on this it's very simple we have a Patreon tier specifically called the Kick to the Gut Champion tier and mm. above. So anyone who joins us on this tier will get free merchandise from Kick to the Gut. So any merchandise that we create now or in the future, you will get it. So as of now, we have the Kick to the Gut mug. 
Yep. So anyone who joins us on that tier will send you guys deliver to you a kick to the gut. There you go. We have it right there. And now as an added sweetener, we still have these twelve stickers. So the next few people who join us or upgrade your membership to the kick to the gut champion tier, I believe it's nine ninety nine USD uh, a month. You will get this sticker. You will get this mark and any future merch that we are going to create. And we are going to create a few more merch towards the end of the year for the award. Bro, you yes. look like Vanna White. From, yes, you know, I'm, the, I, I'm trying to channel Vanna White. <laughs> there and, you and, go. And, and uh, you see this mark, right? I literally had it here. It's not a prop, okay? I actually use it to drink my tea. I don't know if you can see my tea stain uh, yeah, in my yeah, mark. Yeah, yeah. You see tea stain? I still uh, got a bit bro, of legit, tea. Uh, legit, uh, legit. Uh, legit you know, I actually use the mark to drink my tea. Uh, uh, so the material can, uh, you know, QC, approve, approve. Yeah, approve, 100%. Very good. I'll uh, throw it on the gut reaction. No, I'm kidding. No, 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 no. no. Let's have to order again for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so do consider joining us on Patreon. Uh, be part of our Singapore Wrestler Top 20 rankings as well. Uh, and if you want the merch, like uh, Mr. Young said, we still have 12 pieces of those decal stickers. Limited edition as of now. Yes. Unless we mass print some more. Go join us uh, and become a patron and you we will deliver that to you directly to your house. Also, if we decide to make Suck Her Poppers stickers, <laughs> which apparently has become a thing because of our little drinking game. like uh, Yeah, why not, right? Why not? Suck okay. Her Poppers. Okay, the problem with that, right, is yep. um, people who are who have no context will be like, what is this vulgar shit? <laughs> it, it's like, if they know, they know, you know? Yeah, if, if like, you if don't know, know, you're like, hey, why so vulgar? Yeah, yeah. Was, hey, but... Uh, Ah. Wait, one more one more thing as well before we go on to our la- last topic of the day interviewing Sean. Uh a couple of people were asking us about Patreon stuff, right? They were saying yeah. like, hey, you know, uh if you don't go for the events, can mm. we still uh give our ratings or greetings, right? Mm. Uh very simple. We would encourage you to go attend whether it's the SPW show, Grapple Max show, and then if you are a patron, you can send your ratings to us on our Discord, right? But if you don't, or if you haven't entered any of the show, we encourage you to check out their matches i think that yes. they put up on their youtube channels after the fact mm. and if you also want to give your two cents worth and give your ratings based on that we will also include them in as well oh right? absolutely yeah we yeah. want to make this uh, as widely available as possible to everybody us correct. being able to not just watch but also have a say in singapore wrestling all right and the best part is right uh if we can't attend like me or mr young we, we have any uh you know outside comments we can't attend the show we will let you guys be the ones representing Kick to the Guts, attending the events for us, and we yes. will take your ratings as part of the rankings as well. You will be our eyes and ears in this Singapore wrestling scene. Yeah, man. And I, I quickly want to give a shout-out to Jeff, uh, who actually attended SPW Clash at the club, gave his uh, star ratings for it, and also Div and uh, Sally for attending uh, the most recent Grapple Max Amplify, mm. uh, giving their ratings as well, because we've been kind of doing a monthly top five rankings. If you remember, Mr. Yeah, we did one for March. That's right. And in my most recent Patreon post, exclusive for all our Patreons, we have now the top five rankings for April. I actually want to share it across. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Before, so before, before before we share, that, I have one more thing that I want to whet your appetite with. Ooh, go for it, bro. Oh, there you go. I know it's lunchtime. Bro. And if you haven't had your lunch yet, oh, I know this oh. might be a little bit like, woo, like we're stimulating the juices right now. Oh. But do us a favor, guys, okay? Um, we're, we're trying to get them on board as well. So drop them a follow. Lamar mm-hmm. on Instagram. Yes, yes. You can uh, order stuff from them. You can do catering from them. They are wedding vendors. And they bring you the authentic taste to remember of Malaysian, Indonesian cuisine, bro. All yeah. the great stuff, bro. All the great stuff. Lemak.lemak on Instagram. Drop them a follow. Hopefully, in the future, we'll have them here as a sponsor as well. Bro, look at us, uh, you know, being coming businessmen and promoting our wares like Jim Cornet. Huh? We, we need a TKO. That's what uh, we need. We, we need to make that connection. Okay, very quickly, very quickly. Top five monthly rankings for April, bro. And this is based on the two shows that the uh, the, the local, res- local wrestling promotions did in April. Yeah, so it's SPW Clash at the Club, Grapple Max Amplified. Number five, mm. we have our first women appearance. Ooh, on the ranking. okay, yes. okay. Uh, number five goes to Alexis Lee. Ah, right. Alexis Lee was in the main event of uh, Grapple Max, eh, sorry, SPW uh, uh, Clash at the Club this, is what, this was what I wrote On the analysis right uh, Alexis Lee makes her first appearance On the SW20 list Thanks to her tag team victory In the main event of the show As one of the best Graded performers of the night uh, mm. She was one of the best Graded performers of the night She continues to show Why she thrives in matches Against her male counterparts Nice uh, I, I won't be surprised If you were to end up The highest ranked female 
star on the final SW20 list if she keeps it up. So I know she is challenging for the title uh, mm -hmm. at Ignition. So definitely keep a, uh, keep, keep a look, keep a look out. out. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Num number four, still holding strong. He was on this list last month. He, still, he is still here. The statement Andrew Tang, right? Yeah. Who happens to be Alexis' tag team partner. Mm. <laughs> so he makes consecutive appearances on the monthly top five rankings thanks to his wild and chaotic performance at Clash of the Club. Uh, while it was essentially a B-card show, he continues to show why he is one of Singapore's best wrestlers thanks to his dominant performance against Jack and Cheese. Nice. Right? And he has a very highly anticipated showdown against Aiden Rex at Ignition as well. So keep your eyes tuned for that. All right. Number three. This mm. was very hard to choose because a lot of the star ratings were similar. Yeah. But he still stands out as the best Showtime Inc. performer. Can you make a guess, Mr. Young? Best Showtime Inc. performer? Mm. I mean, they have a lot of gems. Is it uh, SPD? Well, SPD is not part of... Oh! Uh, Offsted from Showtime Inc. Uh, technically. Yeah. Right? Prabhu? Okay. Yes, it is Prabhu. There you it go. is Prabhu. So SPD has been didn't wrestle this month, so he, mm. he doesn't make the list. But Prabhu once again is on the top five list, very consistent as well. Uh, like I said, it was tough to choose between the Showtime Inc. member members, but the Silverback was on top form at Amplify. If you recall, completely destroying the young duo of Tidus and Nathaniel, if yep. you remember, right? Yep. And now we have this upcoming faction war brewing uh at uh at the Grapple Fight Max Club. Fight Club. So, you know, yeah, he right now is the kick to the gut reigning rising star of the year. Mm. He could easily be the top Singapore wrestler of the year if he keeps this going, right? At the end of the year, right? All right, number two. Yes. Number, you'll be very surprised who makes this list. Okay. Very, very surprised. He was awarded, I won't say how many stars, but he was awarded the highest stars of the night and tied with number one. Ban Sacha. Oh. Very surprising, huh? Mm -hmm. Very surprising. Okay, so this is what I wrote. Uh, this is thanks to his shocking heel turn and chair shot attack on Christian. Despite losing the match against Ships Ahoy, his storyline descent into darkness could be one of the <laughs> most compelling stories that Grapple Max has ever put out. Mm -hmm. And remember the reactions that he got for turning heel so-called? Yes. That was enough to give him that 4.5. So... Nice. Kudos, top marks for storytelling. So, who is the number one? Who takes mm. the top spot then? If the puppet had number two, clearly the puppeteer would have got the number one, right? Okay, we know who it is. Yes, number one goes to Big Dave. There you go. He, he tops the month's ranking due to his masterful manipulation of Ban Sacha. Mm. He remains the top one of the top stars in Grapple Max despite not being part of the main event. So mm -hmm. shout out to him. And this is a credit to his abilities not just in terms of the wrestling moves but storytelling as well. There all you right. go. There, there you, go. you that, go. That's our top five for April. Of course, you can find out more about all the rankings and ratings on our Patreon page. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to come join us on Patreon, we would absolutely appreciate it at whatever tier is comfortable for you. Links mm -hmm. are in the description. Of course, we also got our Discord links in the description. Uh, yeah, drop us a follow there. We carry on the conversation there. Very quickly, also want to mention, uh, somebody just brought it up in chat as well. There is a new mm. promotion, a new wrestling promotion yes. in town. New, but not really new. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, if you guys have seen social media, clearly Grapple Max is making big money moves, big time CEO moves in expanding their product. Yeah. So, I mean, you're referencing uh, Muhammad Daniel, right? New mm -hmm. Wave Evolution, which is Grapple Max's quote unquote developmental brand. Ah, so is it like NXT or Grapple Max or is it its own standalone brand? That's very interesting to find well, out. Well, we'll yeah? have to see, right? But they apparently are going to do shows as well. Mm -hmm. So, is it time for us to get Greg or Lady Killer or one of our founders from Grapple Max to come on the show? To of kind course, of give of us course. some context what's happening here, yeah? Yeah. So, see, that's the thing about wrestling, right? If it's not like the WWE, AEW stuff, it's local wrestling. There's always something to talk about. So, the wrestling scene, both mm -hmm. locally and internationally, is as hot as it's ever been. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're all riding that wave. We're loving it. Lah. So, uh, yeah, once again, come it. join us on our Discord for more chats. Join us on our Patreon if you want to take your support for us and the local wrestling scene to the next level. And talking about supporters of pro wrestling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, well, I, I, I would love to make the introduction myself as well, but uh, Mr. Young, yeah. bro, we thought we were big wrestling fans. We thought we had our own collection. Huh? Yeah, see, uh, like, wow, look, look, I got title <laughs> belt only. Like, wow, a big deal like that. Huh? And then we met this guy. 
And hey, joining us on the show, as promised, we have Sean, who is a massive WWE pro wrestling fan. First of all, thank you so much for joining us on the show here on a Sunday afternoon, man. <laughs> afternoon, uh, afternoon, guys. Afternoon, hey. everyone. Hey. Oh, thanks awesome. for having me, man. Also, okay, we got to give some context to our listeners, right? You know, of course. Uh, recently, we saw this uh, one uh, IG real video that came out from, you know, I think uh, like a local like real estate publication, Uchify yeah. SG. I'm not sure whether you guys are aware of it. And they did like an awesome home tour of your house. And some one of our listeners kind of like sent us a DM and like, hey, foreign. I think we just found like the biggest WWE <laughs> fan collector in Singapore. Can you mm. guys try to track him down? So yeah. here you are, Sean. <laughs> uh, and when we saw that video, we were like, okay, this guy is part of our tribe, Kakilang. This is our family, <laughs> right? Fellow yeah. pro wrestling fans. So yeah, we knew yeah. we had to get in touch and have a little bit of a chat. So once again, thank you so much for taking time out to, you know, uh, talk to us. Um, okay. Let's, I guess, you know, let's go right from the start. What got yeah. you into wrestling in the first place? Because, you know, it is quite the journey from being a wrestling mm. fan to owning a collection that's, I don't know how much it's worth. I can only see, like, I saw the video. Oh my goodness. I was like, I mean, I have a bit of a collection of random stuff, but nothing compared to yours, bro. Oh, thanks, yeah. thanks. <laughs> uh, so I think my earliest uh, memory I started was, uh, yeah, I started watching Wrestling 6. Oh. Also, it was uh, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior main event, mm. right? Champion mm. versus champion. Nice. Fan favorite versus fan favorite. You know? So, uh, when I, I saw that match, I, I was hooked. Mm. Yeah. So, ever since then, you know, I started to watch uh, wrestling. Uh, and then, after that, you know, I, I had discussions with my dad and even my elder brother. Hey, who's the best wrestler, you know? <laughs> oh. who, yeah. who got then, you? Like, did you just randomly see it on Channel 5 one day or did your dad watch? That's oh. why you watch with yeah. him. Yeah, so my, my dad has been watching, you know, my uh -huh. dad was watching and then the, the, my brother and I, we just sat down and just watched uh -huh. watch together. So Good. at the time, I, I, I didn't know, you know, I didn't mm. know anyone. And I just saw, you know, you know, last time they used to have jobbers, right? Yes. So you, the, the established superstar versus the jobber and then we are, we are sit there, I will laugh. We say, hey, <laughs> why, you know, the, the tin fella being slammed around and pinned within a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it it's a, kind of got my attention. Uh, then, but I didn't really understand much then, just, just watching them, you mm. know. Uh, then it really, uh, it was really WrestleMania 6. Uh -huh. uh, that, that main event, that match itself, yeah. Uh, not so much of the, the earlier matches, but really yep. that match itself. Uh, that was where I started to take note. You know, that yeah. us, at, at the point of time, I didn't really know who who was who then. Still, yep. mm -hmm. yep. I'm I'm also, curious. I'm curious to know, right? Like WrestleMania yeah. Six in Canada. Mm -hmm. Um, how how did that event somehow ended up in front of you? Like in terms of viewing, how do you find out about this WrestleMania? How do you actually watch it? Channel Five, in Singapore? Is it? Uh, it, it used to be late. on Channel 5. Yeah. yeah, it used to be on Channel 5. Wow. That, so, so we, I, I feel like we have the same origin story. Is that case of like, you know, they will play the pay-per-view in Singapore, but like yeah. on a Saturday at 11 p.m., three weeks mm. later, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see, I see. That's so cool. So, so like in a way, I think the golden era was like your origin, right? With yes, pop. yes, mm. definitely golden era. Yeah. Okay, okay. Really, really cool. I think it's very easy <laughs> to judge a person's age when you talk to them about wrestling. <laughs> like, which era did you start? Okay, yeah. Um. Okay, yeah. Uh, golden era. Okay, I think uh, yeah, we are yeah. in the same age bracket already. <laughs> I think I think yeah. I think that's cool. That's cool. And and you know something I'm very curious for people who watch during that era, like yeah. like when we watch it back, we realize Alamak, this one okay la, a bit <laughs> okay, a bit like you know good guy versus bad guy. But like as a child or like you know growing up in that era, how real did it feel to you? Was it like almost like watching superheroes in real life, or how was the experience for you? Yeah, for me, uh, I mean, I enjoyed watching the different characters, right? The superstars, you know, their mm. costumes, their mm -hmm. entrances. You know, and, and there there were folly uh storylines, you know, storylines that yep. I, I could understand and follow, you know, mm. like uh uh Macho, you know, Macho Man, then Macho King versus yeah. Ultimate Warrior, right? Yes. You yeah, know? sensational then, Sherry with yeah, Queen, uh, Queen, and, Queen and Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yes, yeah. yes. So it was quite uh, you know, it's very long, you know, they could tell stories that you know, you could really drag and tell stories and mm. you could get us in, invested in it. Yeah, awesome. so yeah, Undertaker. I mean, we know also, the first time I saw him, I mean, as a kid, I was a bit scared. Oh, you know? yeah. Well, oh, hey, this fella, he, you know, he <laughs> doesn't feel pain. Is it normal? Yeah. How, you, yeah. know, you know, 
Yeah. He died already, is it? <laughs> yeah, he's a zombie. Was yeah. The Undertaker the first one to put the doubt in your head? Because as a child, I feel like a lot of people, before The Undertaker, is like, okay, la, I can buy this guy as a barber. I can buy this, uh, you know, yeah. uh, Hulk Hogan. He can Hulk up. But then you have this fellow who will sit up from everything. He's a dead man. It's like, was that yeah. the first guy? You're like, hey, wait a minute. Something is a bit different, a bit <laughs> off here. Huh? Yeah. I mean, I, I thought that, you know, he had uh, superpowers. Yeah. Yeah. How come, you know, the, the blows don't hurt him? And yeah, yeah. He just keeps coming up. And he doesn't even, at the time, he, he, he you know, he didn't make a sound. Mm. No grunt, no nothing. Yep. Just like yes. boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you know, it just keeps coming up. So, and then he just, you know, he ends the match to some boom, one, two, three. So, mm-hmm. it, it was quite uh, impressive then. And, you know, he used to come up with the body bags and, and yeah. of oh, course, yes. with Paul Bearer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, so bit, at that point, I, to be very honest, I I, I would say I, have, I had nightmares, but you know, I was a bit, a bit more worried, wow. a bit yeah, scared yeah. compared to, you know, superstars like Bret Hart. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. I had the same thing, you know. You know, when I was growing up, I wasn't afraid of, you know, like when you watch like horror movie, Asian movie, like okay lah, ghost is ghost. But for some reason I felt like Undertaker <laughs> and Kane was real, you know. Like <laughs> when they did those buried alive matches, uh, I really yeah. scared like someone's gonna die on this paper. Oh view. my god. And, you know, as a kid, you are like you really believe all these things was mm. happening. So I, yeah, I, I I think I can resonate with you when you talk about Undertaker <laughs> give you nightmares sometimes. <laughs> uh. Oh my god. So who is your favorite wrestler from from that era, from the golden era, uh, definitely uh, Hulk Hogan, you know, mm. Hulk Hogan and uh, Ultimate Warrior. Mm, uh, awesome. In fact, it was because of that match at WrestleMania Six that got me started, and right. my first two figures that really started my whole collection was the Hasbro figures, you know, mm. the Hulk Hogan. And I, I purposely oh. chose the Hulk Hogan with the bare heart action. Mm-hmm. Ah. Because there were you know there are new, uh, a few different uh, movements <laughs> that he could make, right? So yeah, I purposely yeah. chose that one. Uh and the Ultimate Warrior with the slam. Mm. Oh, so, so these awesome. two were the, the, the my first my first two figures then. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Did, uh, w- did you what did you have to do to convince your dad to buy it for you? <laughs> Birthdays. Oh, <laughs> oh okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good tactic, good tactic. So, uh, yeah. Curious, curious. Was this like, uh, where do you buy your figurines from? Was it like Toys R Us or uh, was it like a specialty store? No, no. At the time, uh, they were they were easily found. You no know, mass retail, so Toys R Us, mm. Isetan. Yeah. Uh, oh, even wow. the neighborhood shops sold them know, downstairs. Yeah, neighborhood shops sold them. You know, oh. sold them. Uh, that was how I got them, and they were very good prices then. You know, yeah. Can't get this price now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Price. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and another, another thing I'm curious about, you know, like yeah. from that era, right? Like, of course, cartoons and like toy figurines was like a big thing. But like, what gravitated you towards buying uh, figurines? Because a lot of people show their fandom in different ways. They mm. Either they become a wrestler mm. or they, you know, like for us, we do podcasting. But like, why, why do yeah. you choose this path of the toy collection? Collection. Yeah. It, it started off just because I wanted to play with them. Mm. Mm. I just I play with them then. I, I started to buy more to build up the roster, right? Yeah. So I got Bret Hart, Bret Hart Undertaker, you know, then I start, as I start, uh, started to build, you know, the roster, I started to play them. Mm-hmm. And every single day, every free moment, I would take them out and I'll start playing. After finishing from work. You know, nice. Uh, Did you so, uh, like get a ring? Because I would assume that the ring would be the most expensive one. <laughs> Uh yes yes uh I got the Hasbro ring as well mm. yeah oh. because that, at that, at a point in time that was uh that ring came along with the the belt ah uh. ring eagle belt so that was the only way we could get the title mm. you know? I see, uh, I see. yeah so I I, I bought that uh, and then mm-hmm. uh, of course I put the championship on Hulk Hogan most of the time uh, <laughs> and the Warrior that, so they battled for the title after Bret Hart came to the picture. <laughs> I see. Okay, this is really, really cool because here, we here at Kick to the Guy, we are we all consider ourselves a fantasy bookers of some mm. sort. <laughs> so I can only imagine with you yeah. and your roster, were you feeling a bit like Tony Khan? Like, you know, oh. I wanted to make all the perfect dream matches <laughs> with all these figurines. <laughs> oh, in fact, I felt more like Vince. Mm. <laughs> you know, Vince and Jim Ross. So even when I was playing, I was doing commentary. You know, ah. oh, 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 what a close line. What talking about it's <laughs> ring. Also, it was... <laughs> And and I actually um played you know so got played with this even though I was uh, even when I was much older like, you know I just took them once in a while I just play yeah uh 
yeah so whenever, wherever i'm bored you know wherever i was stressed mm. i'll just take the ring out rumble <laughs> or, or i'll just do a royal rumble you know <laughs> did, did, did you manage to keep them in good condition because you know i obviously we all have toys right but i go back and yeah. look at my toys i got head missing arm missing <laughs> la. so did you manage to actually keep them in good condition or was it something that you actively thought of doing as well mm. uh definitely not you know as a kid right with the hasbros yeah. so i would say that most of them were in play with condition okay they don't mm. play with condition but then again it to me is priceless mm. because it's the memory you know yeah. and, and the experience going on with them Mm -hmm. uh, of course, along the way now, the some of the actions are not working, the springs are not working, so mm -hmm. you know that in terms of display. Uh, but along the way, as I became a collector, yep. uh, a bit more consideration you know, uh, comes comes into play. Of course, yes. <laughs> okay. So, okay. How, how did you go from, you know, growing up playing with these toys to becoming a collector? You know, there is a, like, did you just look at your collection and go, actually, I got so many already, I might as well start a collection? Or like, what, what was that process? <laughs> Uh okay, basically I just uh focus you know on building my roster. Mm -hmm. It was just to build up my roster. So Hasbro, then after the new, uh the new Jack series came in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Also at mass uh, mass retail. So I I bought them because those were the characters that were not available on the Hasbro's. Mm -hmm. You know. So I had Big Show coming in. Big Show versus Ultimate Warrior. So the oh, scale wow. was very different. Yeah. But, <laughs> Just you know, I just played. So as it you know, as it became more and more, then I started to look. Okay, which are the characters I don't have? Mm. You know, to fill the gaps. Uh, so that was where I started to source actively. Uh, you know, mm. but at that point in time, not working yet. So uh, mm. birthdays, results. Oh, <laughs> right. did did you have to? Because I have to imagine in that time period, the internet wasn't really a thing then. So how did yeah. you go and actively source? Because you know, it's not like now, right? If mm. I need, if I want to know right. uh, the number one to number five in this series, I can go online and find immediately, very easy. Right. But back right. then, like, if your neighborhood store didn't have, let's say, uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, that's it. Like, how are you going to find that very figurine? You know? Yeah. So, uh, I don't actively seek out a particular figure. Uh. So I just go to the shops, and if the shops has that, then right. I just get it. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So you. Gotcha. So you don't have the OCD like I do, I must complete the whole set. <laughs> Actually, I do. Oh, the plot twist! I'm a, I'm a completist. Yeah, yeah so it's it, a, it's a slippery slope, lah. And then they know, uh, so they they will release more set. Then it's like, wow, crap! It's like more money to spend. Yes, yeah. yes, definitely. Uh, a lot of money, a lot of time, but yeah. I think the main issue is space. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 You know, and each time I try to okay. Set completed, it's time to stop. A new series. <laughs> a new oh, series is up. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm very curious. Of course, you said you mentioned you started your collection uh, before you started working, and I'm yeah. assuming you're still living in your parents' place. So, like um, when you said if the issue is about space, did yeah. somehow your room just got too big? And like, how do you convince your parents to like, okay, <laughs> let me keep all this, let me arrange this in the way that I want it? Okay, maybe I just show you some pictures that I have. Okay. Yeah, uh, sure, sure, sure. So this, I'm not too sure. Uh, yeah. So I was yeah, very yeah. lucky. Mm. Oh, dang, I was very man. lucky to have the support of my parents there. No, I stayed him. Ah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. my move dad, it to the center a bit yeah, more. Kind of move it ah, to there the you back. go. Uh, move it to your left. Okay. To your left. Oh, to your go. left. A bit more. A bit more. There oh, you there go. You go. Look Perfect. at that handsome boy. Ah, there you go. All right. Yeah. Oh, nice. Ah. So, uh, so my dad actually, you know, considered my display needs so he, during the renovation you know, oh. got there, the ID to do a small display so nice so this was the display part bro uh, then uh, he got you a trophy collection like essentially <laughs> trophy, like case, a tro yeah. trophy case yeah 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 then after awesome. that he to the left to the left you, to the, uh, yeah, there the, you go there you go yeah alright oh, oh, nice, after nice. that he bought the shelves for me to oh, put my wow. entrances I see a smackdown thing I see a title at the bottom what's that title there uh, the inter intercontinental, the the Hasbro wing oh. eagle. So oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, is the old IC which is like an oval shape. The uh, old one, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, really cool, really cool. Um, very, very curious because actually that shelf kind of looks like your shelf currently in your house. So do you bring it over, or is just uh, an old? No, no, no. That that shelf is now 
use for kitchen. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay lah. Yeah. The parents uh, repurpose it. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, he needs a bigger set of shelves already for the also, burgeoning yeah. collection. Yeah. Uh, uh, very very curious to hear uh to yeah. understand as well. Like okay, I assume this was more of like a your own passion, like a thing that you do on your own. But yeah. uh, in 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 the course of growing your collection, do you actually come across or run into other fellow collectors here in Singapore? Oh yes, yes, of course. Uh, I mean. For me, the main thing, you know, in this collecting journey is meeting fellow collectors, you know, mm-hmm. friends. Uh, I'm not too sure whether uh you guys know Sharon. Uh, Sharon, she's in the media. Sharon Lee. Uh, well, she is she from Straight Time. She does interviews it, on the wrestlers. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. I, I've heard about her. Yeah. Yeah. So f- for her, I mean, she was featured before because you know, as a swim, a female with a collection as as big as hers. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, and and she. As uh, she's also in the media, so she gets to interview you know the stars and and. Uh, I see. I, I believe she was at WrestleMania this year as well, right? She traveled there. Wow. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Yes, yes, so. yes. Okay, yes. very very cool. And, and like um and, and of course you know as as you you grow older you know you get married you have you know you like you have kids now like what was that conversation like when I don't know maybe when you were dating your wife for the first time and she kind of found out oh I, I'm dating a wrestling fan wait, wait hang on like? Let, let's backtrack that because I want to know the dating life of like when you bring somebody home right and show them the yeah. collection yeah. has there ever been a date that ran away <laughs> like, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. okay uh, whoa. Uh, not really not really okay, that's okay, good, that's good. because good. I've always been very upfront with them ah. uh, mm. you know I mean once I feel that things are like, going a bit more serious, right? Before mm-hmm. they might come to my house and say, okay, I'm actually a, a collector of, I'm a wrestling collector. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So, uh, to be honest, at that time, my collection is not as massive now. You, know, <laughs> you probably see that two, yeah. two shelves there. So, mm-hmm. you come in, oh, quite nice, quite colourful, you know, mm-hmm. but nothing too serious. And most of them were still in boxes or, you know, plastic bags ah, somewhere. So, I see. not the full extent. They Isn't know. that always the joke? If you have a collection, be it Star Wars, Marvel, or wrestling, right? First date, like, you hide everything first. Then slowly, you bring out more, bring a bit more, more, <laughs> bring out more. That, only after they married you already, then they're like, now I understand the full extent of this <laughs> fandom. Okay, I, I was very lucky. You know, my my wife mm. is very understanding. In fact, I was very open because uh, this has to, I mean, this is one very important criteria. Mm. Mm. You know, if you if you cannot accept it, then it's very hard because I really mm. massive collection. You know, I I, I mean nice. I don't I don't expect uh her to support me in terms of buying for me. Yep. You know, but yeah, you know when I buy, you know it's you accept it. You know, yeah and yeah, yeah. She, uh, Kudos to her, she has been superb. You mm. know, uh, look I mean look at this. How many collectors or wives do you know? You know, mm. allow their husbands to put up their full display yeah. You know, mm. yeah. out out in the hall. I'm not talking about in a room. I'm mm, talking about, yes. you know, in the, the hall. hall yeah. and, and she yeah. even helps me to plan. Oh, wow. Oh, like layouts, is it? The layout, nice. design process. She even helps me to plan. So oh, that's, that's amazing. Really, yeah, so that's one. <laughs> Wife number one. <laughs> Ay, yo. Shout out to all our partners for you yeah, know, letting yeah. us love wrestling. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Um, Do you like watch wrestling with her? Like, I assume, obviously, you still watch the product now. Lah. Uh, once in a while, once in a mm. while. Yeah, once in a while. Uh, she doesn't watch. Okay. Uh, she, she doesn't watch wrestling, but, you know, uh, when when it came when WWE came to Singapore, mm-hmm. uh, she she bought uh ringside tickets, you know, for both of us for so my sweet. birthday. Wow! Yeah, so oh, wait, wait, hang on. Yeah. You are June baby also. Uh no no I'm in August. Oh August. okay. When early, did early. they come to town in August? Oh, uh, you bought tickets in August. Uh no 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 they this one I think it came in twenty fifth. 2015, 2015, oh, okay. I think the July show, July, right, July right. show. Yeah. Like early birthday. Early birthday present. Early birthday present. I always make that connection because every time WWE has come to Singapore, like in the past couple of times, it's mm. always been on my birthday or my birthday weekend. It's the end <laughs> June because I'm an end June baby. So right. I was like, it's always my birthday present to myself. <laughs> That's amazing. That's, that's good. Amazing. That's good. Yeah. yeah man. Treat yourself, man. Treat yourself. <laughs> I, I noticed in your collection as well in that video, right? Um, you have like the chairs, the, the, the right. gift chairs. How many events have you been to, both locally and overseas? 
Okay, uh, for the local events, I've been to every single one mm. uh, each, each time that the WWE comes to town. Yeah. Uh, I haven't got a chance to go overseas uh, oh. because of the nature of my job. You know, mm. I've been wanting to go WrestleMania, but I just can't, you know. Uh, right. And also with small kids, it's very yep. difficult. Very difficult, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, speaking of like your price possessions, like, right. can, you, can you share with us like some of like you, what you would consider like some of the rarest, uh, you know, items in your collection? Okay, uh, I... I do have quite a few. I mean, I, I consider it rare. One mm. number one of, is of course the Ultimate Warrior figure that was featured. Mm. Uh, yes, yes. That to me, if I had to choose among the figures, that would be my holy grail. So, so to say. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. I believe it's personally signed by Ultimate Warrior, and also it's like a limited numbers, right? right? Yes. So it, it it was from his uh, personal collection, his estate, so ah. so to speak. So oh. that's why I had the, the official, you know, COA, mm. you know, the letter of certification. It comes with him. Oh. Uh, and the picture of him holding the figure in his kitchen. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, and what was, what I really liked about it is I managed to get a very good number, 15 of 15. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's, wow, it's not easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, for me, it's either 1 of 15 or 15 of 15. No in between. <laughs> can, can I ask how much did you have to splash on that one? Uh, several thousand US. Se- se- how much again, sir? Several thousand. Several US. thousands. Okay, several thousands. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. mentioned Sounds it was right. it was delivered by his estate. So was this like kind of released only after he passed away? Uh, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. So this, this was, was then before. All right. Okay. Yeah, before. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Uh, yeah. Another thing, yeah, I think Young already referenced it about like there was a chair. I think, was it WrestleMania right. 29 chair? And it was signed uh, you by... Guys are look at, yeah, you guys yeah. are looking at the chair, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the chair is actually oh, here. We have the chair. We oh my have God, the we chair. have the chair. We have the chair, you can't see. Also, uh, to share how to, how you probably to have to kind of sit to the back a bit so you can yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, see yeah. Yeah. how big okay. it is. Just give me a minute. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Oh, wow, it's, it's huge. It looks like someone can whack you on the head with that chair. <laughs> yes, yeah. The chairs are very heavy. Okay, imagine. Just I can imagine. Oh, there you go. There you go. Can okay. you see? Okay, e- can you see? Can you, uh, you have see? to put it in front of you, I think. Yeah, uh, put it in front of you or to your left. To your left. Yeah, there you go. Oh, oh there my you one, yes. <laughs> uh, what a oh, huge there you ass go. chair. Yeah. Okay. I, you see the signatures on the bottom of the chair. Very nice. I can yeah. see this. Yeah, I can see the signatures. Oh, there, there you, go. you go. Full, full blast. I, I, I'm oh, trying nice. to see if I recognize Ooh. any of the signatures. Uh, can, you, can you kind of list out who who, Iron, who is that Iron is that Iron Sheik <laughs> Iron Sheik okay uh, I mean the the more notable ones right yeah, yeah. you have uh, Brock Lesnar oh <gasps> uh, nice. the, the Rock and Cena mm. right uh, Triple H mm. nice. Undertaker I see CM uh, Punk I see CM Punk CM Punk yes I see too shit uh, the C well, and then the uh, X there and then M yeah uh, Vince Oh, Vinnie Mac. Yeah, Vince. Uh, Steph, Vince. Oh wow, Shane. <laughs> is it in the entire Vince McMahon family? Wow. Uh, this is Shane's. Uh, hold on. This is there Shane's. There you go. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Shane. Okay, that's really cool. Uh, uh yeah. can, can can you tell us the story of like how why why did WWE release this particular collector's edition and assigned by everyone? What was like the, yeah? What was the thought process behind that? They want to make money, lah. What? what no, I, question yeah, is that? Of course, they want to make money. What? That's the obvious. <laughs> but like, how did they come up with this idea of signing everyone like on this chair? <laughs> okay, <laughs> <make> uh, <laughs> for for yeah. this chair, it was it was very special because I actually got a friend, mm. uh, I had a friend, uh, to do it for me. Oh, <laughs> oh what, so, so your friend was there, or? Yes, yes, because my friend is based in the states. Oh um, wow! So he very kindly uh got. All these signatures for me, uh, you know, and uh, I mean, to be fair, I also paid him a token, ah. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. It, it has to go that way, lah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but this, yeah. this was released by WWE. It's not like the fan took the, his chair and then walked around backstage asking for signatures, right? <laughs> yeah, this was uh during the during the WrestleMania event mm. itself. Uh, so this is seat twenty. There's actually a number. Oh wow! Cool. Oh, oh, yeah. Careful, careful. Awesome. Yeah. I see, I see. So it's basically if people who bought awesome. bought who, yeah. people who bought those seats or sat on those seats, like probably ringside seats, then they get yeah. all their chairs signed, is it? Uh ringside seats. So in terms of in terms of the autographs, uh I I 
Honestly, I don't know how he did it. You know, yeah. Backstage. He, he went on backstage. On the streets. <laughs> hotel. <laughs> airport. So. But yeah, it took him a while. It took him a while. To be honest, it took him a while. Uh, I can imagine, yeah. But I mean, kudos to him. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm wow. probably the only who has this right now. Yeah. yeah. You know? He it's literally incredible. probably spent huh? the entire WrestleMania weekend. Uh, Hunting Hall people of down. Fame or yeah. what. He probably called yeah. Brock Lesnar in the toilet and asked him to sign. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me, please sign for me. <laughs> Oh dear, I mean, wow. yeah, I mean, how how do you get Vince? Yeah. You know, how do you get Shane? How do you get Steph? How do wow. you get Brock? Does he have some sort of backstage credential? Like, is he someone affiliated somehow? Like, or, or you cannot say, you cannot pout to his connections. <laughs> uh, it's, it's connections. La. Yeah, la. I have to imagine because yeah, there's no way a fan could get Vince and Steph and Shane. Like that sounds impossible <laughs> to me. So it, yeah, it has to be like, okay, he knows somebody who knows somebody. You know, that sort of situation. Uh, be yeah. honest, your friend is Paul Heyman, right? Be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think oh, Paul is going to do this for me, carrying a heavy chair and going around? Oh yeah, that's <laughs> true. Token money, token. Yeah. He'll do it for the money. He's the wise man. La. Wow, that, that is very impressive. Yeah. Um, wow, so okay, obviously, like you have your expensive pieces but what's the most like sentimental piece or is the ultimate warrior the sentimental piece uh okay in terms of sentimental honestly it would be my hasbro uh mm. Hulk Hogan and Hulk Hogan. Mm. the because one you grew this, up with uh. these were the first two that i got mm. that really started this you know, mm. piece um yeah that makes so, a lot of sense yeah that makes yeah. a lot of sense yeah. um I, i'm also very curious like uh, i'm pretty sure since you're a collector, you would yeah. probably have watched or are a fan of the WWE's most wanted treasures. Yeah. The, you know, that yeah. TV show where like all the wrestlers go around trying to find like hidden stuff and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Was there anything from that so-called TV series as a whole that, that kind of made you feel nostalgic or like reminded you of your own collector mm. journey? Okay, uh... When you know when they first advertised for this show, right? Because they, yeah. they I remember they sent out a, a message, a broadcast, you know, mm. uh, to, to fans around the world who might have something that they, you know, oh, okay. because they were going around to try to find all these lost treasures, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I was looking at my collection. What do I have, or what would they want, you know? But mm. so far, I mean, not nothing that they would like, but, you mm. know, Most of the time, they were looking. They, they were, they were looking for uh, their attires, right? Attire. They want, they yeah. want the attire, something of significance. And in Singapore, it's very hard to get. Uh, Correct. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Are you saying that anyone from WWE specifically reached out to you or was it just like an open call? Like It was an open call. It was an open yeah. call. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was an open call. So I was looking around, okay, then like nothing, nothing. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> so you have figurines, you have title yeah. belts, obviously you have chairs. Right. Is there anything that is a little bit different? Like, you know, like, like what? Like, I don't know, a WWE watch or something that is not the typical collector's item. All right. Okay. I mean, I, I'd just like to share two more pieces. Uh, mm. The first one is a WrestleMania 20 program. Oh, oh wow. Oh. Okay. So, okay. Again, go to your uh, left a bit. Oh, all right. oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Ah, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, there you go. Wow. A lot of signatures inside here as well. Uh, so, you have uh, Vince's full signature. Is wow. it from your, your friend again? Yes. Nah, oh, yeah. There. Yeah, there. There you go, Vince. There you signature. go, Vince. Wow. Oh, Dude, I would be I would laminate this whole thing, yeah. <laughs> I uh, like the collector in me is looking at you sort of flipping through the book, going, Oh my, don't touch, Lee. don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> the paper yeah. will degrade, no? Oh wow, oh, is wow. that Eddie? Eddie's Eddie. side. And Kurt. Kurt Angle Eddie, on the right. Kurt, yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm just flipping damn. through the main ones, yeah. Uh, yeah. I gotta I gotta ask. Oh no. I know what you're gonna ask. I know you're gonna ask. Is it at the center? Is that Chris Benoit's signature? Oh my god, god Chris Benoit's oh. signature. Right, right. Okay, <laughs> so you've got the main <laughs> the entire main <laughs> event. Um as well as the man who shall not be named anymore in the WWE, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, amazing. No, that, that's really a rare collector <laughs> yeah. item for sure. And it's one of my favorite WrestleManias of all time. Yeah. I mean, other than 40, which was insane. Uh, let me sidetrack yeah. a little bit, by the way. Yeah. Did you watch 40 like through and through live? Uh, no. Oh. I, I, I didn't get a chance to watch it. Uh, I was at work. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I, I caught snippets of it, you know, mm. when 
And honestly, now with the internet, right? Yeah. Mm. Spoilers and results are out so fast. Correct. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So this this is the kind of thing that I I I don't enjoy lah. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're, you're old, old school. You're old school lah. You can't yeah. Avoid. Because nowadays, you know, the rumors are out. You already know that what's gonna happen before yeah. the thing yeah. happening, right? Sometimes, so it kind of spoils the surprise as a mm. fan. So I try not to see, you know. Mm. I I I I'm curious to know you know yeah. uh, you know if, since you're a long time fan what what yeah. do you think of like the current WWE product do you have actually wrestlers that you are fans of or you support right now Okay uh I mean I've been watching you know periodically on and off and, and for a while uh to me I mean no knocks to them you know kudos to them they're all very athletic and all that mm-hmm. but but uh there was a period of time where I felt that it was more of a sports fest Mm. Mm. You know, sport after sport after sport after sport and you know like some matches didn't really make sense to me yep. uh, storyline wise you know it this sounds but, like AEW's entire existence excuse me <laughs> <laughs> go ahead yeah so I mean now uh, with Triple H you know back at the helm you know yes. he's, he's helming and I can see changes in you know the production you mm. know, uh, and I really enjoy you know the, the storyline being told uh, uh, you know over a long period of time yeah. you know Cody's story you know it's bringing yeah. back interest mm. and yeah. I also enjoy the way you know they film the, the, the camera actually follows yes. the talent backstage the one take shot from backstage one take yeah. from backstage so I, I, I thought this was very, very interesting and you know it's something that every fan would enjoy you know the yeah. backstage scene and you know, as it goes out, they spread out. Oh, go, go, go! You know, mm. encouraging. You know, the semi yeah, yeah. one was yeah, was Incredible. great. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, now as we are speaking here, we are just hours removed from you know WWE backlash from France. People oh. of France, yeah. I'm so uh, sleepy, bro. I watched it live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. I, I, I'm just curious for you. You know, uh, given your schedules as a family man, yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah. How do you consume your wrestling these days? Like, what are your go to ways of consuming WWE? Uh, Basically, YouTube, you know, online mm. Facebook, reports, mm. reports from there. Because uh, uh. my, my, my kid is up and about 24-7, you know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, unless he, once he sleeps, that's where I, I start to have my me time. Mm-hmm. I, uh, see, so, I see, So that's where I start to catch up on anything. <laughs> mm. Got you, got you. So it's hard, la. I mean, obviously, like we talked about it before, right? But it's hard to just consume five hours of wrestling per week. And then that's not counting PLE weekends right because like that's three hours of raw two hours of smackdown like it's nearly yeah. impossible as a working adult <laughs> uh i mean we pick and choose right, right? yeah i mean there are certain segments where you know the promos will go very long and you know yeah. it's you know it's not going to move or shift too much from the storyline mm-hmm. you just you just work yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true, that's you know, true. just I, I just you know just watch the action sometimes mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So just to catch up uh, with the stars. Yeah. Y- you mentioned that your eldest child is uh, about 12. So yeah. uh, as I mentioned <laughs> a little bit earlier, that would be a good time to get into wrestling. So uh, <laughs> what, 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 how is his uh, opinion or how does he react to like your collection? Is he like interested in wrestling as well? Mm. Uh, unfortunately not. You know, when, I, I, when he was younger, you know, I, I got him to play with my figures. I took it out, let him play. And he was playing around and he was interested. Yeah. Uh, but then my wife is not too willing la, to let him mm. watch you know, violence and oh uh, yeah, yeah yeah that's fair so, yeah so I mean I respect that mm. uh, then he's not he's not really into wrestling sometimes he'll just watch for a while then he just goes off you know, yeah. he's more into gaming <laughs> uh, I was I about see. to ask is it because of the iPad or the, the iPhone um, no normally when I watch you know normally I watch, uh, watch uh, on, on TV on, on TV on, and, right right uh, we Actually, we control uh, my kids' screen time. Mm. Uh, they don't get to play. They only get to play one hour over yep. over the weekend. You know, oh, Saturday, Sunday, cool. one hour each. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So other than that, no, no. So uh, what I is see. like, like what kind of games? When you talk about gaming, what kind of games is your kid into? Uh, I mean, currently he's, I mean, he's playing Roblox, mm. right? Roblox. Mm. So Roblox he has huge. started. Yeah. Yeah, so he has started to do uh, some programming. He's trying to create Ooh. his own games. and yeah. also, So ah. that's the part where I, I just allow him to explore, you know. Mm. Yeah. There's a very interesting path, um, you know, to go into game design, especially yeah. at that age. Um, mm. I, I, I do not know how soon will he be allowed to play WWE 2K, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you think that's the way to get him back into wrestling <laughs> from playing wrestling games? <laughs> uh, I, I'm not too sure about that because mm. he, he doesn't have 
he he doesn't seem to have that interest right mm, now. So probably you know the the uh oh he does he just he does enjoy reading uh the books. Uh-huh. He does enjoy reading the wrestling books that I have. So uh, the event books he does flip through. He oh, reads, like the yeah. visuals and there's yeah. photos yes, and all that, right? Books, mm. Yeah, very so very interesting. Speak, yeah. speak, speaking of the WWE games, did you grow up playing the WWE games? Oh yes, of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm a I'm a a gamer, a closet gamer, but I enjoy okay, nice. collecting uh, collecting even the the systems and uh, mm. play, and I probably uh, might have every single. Uh, Resting game as well. Nice. Mm. Somewhere in the house, somewhere you know. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I've, I've been playing from since the Nintendo time. Yeah. Let's <laughs> say all Same. the way, yeah, all the way up, Game Boy, you know, all the way up, even now. Uh, which one was your favorite? Uh, and do you play the current ones, the two K twenty four, which is the latest one? Uh yeah yeah mm. until yeah so uh, when you have okay, time but... lah <laughs> when you have time. At night. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah half an hour play one match two matches you know and just then... to. Just yeah, yeah, yeah off ready to sleep. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Seem seem yeah. to be the same playing style yeah. that uh you and Young have. Uh, so yeah, what which one really defined your I don't know um your peak in interest? Was it the SmackDown series? The you know do you remember the PlayStation yeah. series? The Here Comes the Pain. Yeah, know your yeah. role. That all that that yeah. series for a lot of people was where they started with wrestling. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. Correct. So, I mean, that was, uh, in terms of the wrestling game, that was a, a whole new dynamics to it. You know, mm-hmm. it was very different. The gameplay, the but the controller buttons were very simple, you know, press yeah. and press. Compared to, you know, uh, PS1, you know, uh, mm. Attitude, right? Attitude. Oh, yeah. Or, Warzone, or Warzone and Attitude. Yeah. Warzone and Attitude. I mean, I, I, I was pretty good at, at those two. You know, I played every day. I spent many hours. I was, Same. Same. Untouchable, yeah. man. Yes. <laughs> Untouchable. Okay, yeah. I challenge you, bro. We bring out the PlayStation 1. I challenge you to Warzone. Dude, <laughs> you... old schools, man. Yes, yeah. And all the characters had different moves. It's like a Street yeah. Fighter game, right? If you want to do yeah. stunner, you must like front, down, front, square or some nonsense like that. Yeah, grabber, back, back, uh, grabber, yeah. back, back, grabber or something. Yeah, stunner. it was yeah. It was so unintuitive. Now that you look back yeah. on it, it's like, how could... Uh, anyway, but do you yeah. remember... Do you remember as a kid... The Royal Rumble game in arcades. Oh yes, 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 of course. Oh, oh my uh, god. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, what, 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 what do you call it? Is it Wrestle Fest? Uh, yeah. Re- was it, is it Wrestle? Was it Wrestle? Fest? Fest? I, 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 the arcade. So, arcade so there was one like very arcadey one where it was Royal Rumble themed, and then there was another one where the it is very popular one done by Midway. It was the one where Undertaker can shoot out like ghouls like skulls and then skulls and ghouls yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and then when that you punch Shawn Michaels later. yeah that was yeah. that one also another was like classic later. for me arcade yeah, yeah. So I remember one... in the show they throw chicken was it Yokozuna throw chicken and, no no when know, you punch uh, when you punch Yokozuna yeah. got burger come out but <laughs> fried chicken come out <laughs> yeah yeah okay. I yeah, that was played. hilarious that was yeah. hilarious you know uh, I mean the the gameplay was you know comical in a sense you know yeah. but your combos and it was the graphics that really stood out then, yeah. you know, in mm. terms of gameplay. But I, I mean, I really enjoyed in terms of the the Super Nintendo uh, mm. Raw, Raw. Mm. You know, oh, it's the cool. button mashing one. It came oh. after Royal Rumble, so Raw. So uh, uh, that one was very special because it featured Luna. You know, Luna Vachon as Luna the, Vachon. right, right, right wow. as one of the characters, and mm. wow. and all of these wrestlers they had their special moves. And mega moves, mm, mm, correct, right? Correct. So there are two, two. Oh, well, I mean, one was the normal, normal kind of move, right? For example, Bret Hart, you had a sharpshooter, you know, yep, the yeah. guy submit, and then he could also jump off the the, the turnbuckle and then do a somersault and then land on it. So it was quite cute, you know, in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Even though yeah. realistically he would never do a move like that, but <laughs> yeah, it's a course, game, like you're just like ah, it's a game, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so yeah. funny. Um, I kind of want to take the conversation back to a bit of your memorabilia, right? Like, um. Yeah. Would you consider now that your collection is complete, uh, or do you feel that <laughs> if you still feel that it's still one thing that you feel that you still need to source for? Is there anything that you wish you had in your collection? Okay, this is a very good question because this is something that I ask myself, right? At <laughs> one point in time, the collection has to slow down. I mean, yeah. honestly, you know, whether it's financial or space. It, yeah. And there's kind of a point where I ask myself sometimes, okay, what is it that I don't have? Yeah. Because in terms of all the latest wrestlers autographs, I, I would already have them. You know, mm-hmm. old school, I already have them. I would have pieces and all that. Okay, but 
just when I, you know, I, I asked myself that question the other day and I'm very lucky, you know, to get my hands on this item, uh, which I'm going to show you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, it just arrived last night. Ooh. Whoa, okay, and, is this an exclusive? <laughs> yes, uh, it has not been featured anywhere, you know, uh, locally yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, because I, I, I did, I actually did an unboxing video, uh, for the for my friends in the states, lah. Mm. Uh, so it's just unique to them. But this item came in last night, and this could very well be uh my next holy grail piece. Oh, oh. You guys want to wow. just make a guess? What is it? I'll just oh. let you guys look at it. Mm, okay, it's a it's a rectangular shape item. Is it, 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 is is it like a pose a pictures? It's a script. It's a wait wait what what wait what <laughs> is this like a show rundown or something? No, it is actually not a show rundown. But this is actually Owen Hart's contract that he signed. Wait, 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 what? How did you get your hands on <laughs> Owen Hart's signed contract? From which era of the WWE? Like his uh, this, all right. This one was in ninety six. Uh. Let me see. Let me see whether you can see. You can see. Oh my yeah. yes, god! July is that, 1996. Is, is that his signature? Owen Hart. Ninety six. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not the signature. But his signature is inside. Okay, yeah. so the it says Titan has... Sports on top. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Titan Sports contract. So yeah. it has his address. You know and. Uh, a, a lot of information then. Uh, right, right. Rare is was because his contract had changes. He was special in the sense, you know, he was special in the company. They yeah. made changes to his contract and it also has, uh, you know, his uh, Blue Blazer gimmick contract. Oh, yeah. oh, it's actually stated in there. Yes. Wow. It's actually stated inside here. And uh, not only that, this contract featured autographs, uh, quite a few autographs from Owen, right? Because he signed mm. uh, different parts of the contract. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but also, just let me find, yeah, let's take a look. Yeah. Oh my God. Is that Linda, his signature? Linda, Owen. Okay, uh -huh. we'll move to the left. A bit more to the... Ah, there you go. Uh, okay. So Linda and Owen. Wow. Right. right. So with this, I in a way, I kind of uh, finished collecting, you know, the, the Vince family's auto. <laughs> right. Oh well. yeah, Lin yeah Linda signature. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have all the McMahon's. Wait, do you have all the hearts? Do you have a Brett somewhere? A uh, Brett definitely. Uh, mm. Nice. Brett, I have a couple. Uh, I have a couple. Uh, so you uh, have Brett, you have Owen. Yeah, I mean the two main ones. Yeah, I, yeah, I missed out cool. on Stu. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I think yeah. a bit uh, before your time. Very, very, very interested to know, right? Because 1996, yeah. I'm just kind of wrecking my brains, right? Yeah. Where was Owen Hart in his career? Because this was after his, like, um, you know, Brad and Owen rivalry. That was in 94. In 96, I believe he was teaming up with Bulldog. They were just about to do this whole Hart uh, Foundation. Because Hart Foundation was yeah. 97, right? Yeah. So, in a way, was this contract signed before the Hart Foundation run? Uh, I would honestly I can't remember but I would believe so because it was yeah. signed in 96 and then 96, 97 they were going more you know in a bit more uh, a bit more extreme mm. uh, you know he was with uh, Bulldog uh, I I think by then he has already split up with Yokozuna uh, yeah. so he was more... yes was... he was in a tag team with Yokozuna yeah. right this yeah. was the one where he had his slammies was it not I think it's during that period yeah, uh, so, so 96, the uh, Slammies with the British Bulldog as a tag team. Yeah, Brian Maybe. Pierman. I think Brian Pierman period. I, I, I'm not... Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so I'm curious, like, I mean, you don't have to reveal it, but like, yeah. did the contract state, like, how many year contract? What was his, like, starting pay or like, down payment? <laughs> did, he, did it state there? Okay, uh, to be very honest, I have not gone through the the, the whole contract yet. Uh, mm. There are more than 30 pages of it. Wow. <laughs> so okay. I was just scanning through and looking at the the, the timeline, the year, mm. uh, then also the you know who signed on it. Mm. Uh yeah, so this was actually a change. Okay, hold on now. Yeah, this is a very interesting time in his career because I know Bret Hart also signed like a 20-year contract around mm. this period. But th this was the contract you're talking about the Bret Hart contract that they ultimately had to back out of, right? Because Vince yes. couldn't get him. Oh, yes. I oh, see the figure. Uh. Okay, Wait. so this oh, is a uh, hand-delivered... Hand uh, uh, move back a bit. A bit. A bit. Move back a bit. Move back a bit. 
Ah, uh, there you go. Okay, yeah. so this is the updated contract. You see the 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 yeah. wow. logo has changed already. So this is some somewhere between ninety eight or ninety nine. Mm. Yeah. Oh. yeah, Sorry, I have to block the the address lah. No worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. Oh, I okay, see. So, wow. This is a really rare piece of history right here, man. Yeah, wow. and a lot of his kind of, you know, Jim Ross Signature. side. Jim Ross, Jim Ross Owen side Hart. as yeah. the talent head, right? And yeah. yeah. Can, so, ha- yeah. <laughs> How much did this set you back? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I think that, that smile told me everything I need to know. Already. <laughs> o- almost as much as the contract was worth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's is uh I think it's within uh reasonable means. Yeah, you okay. know, uh, yes. I mean for for something like this that it is I mean how you know even I ask myself, how do I get hold of this yeah. as yeah. a collector in Singapore? Yeah, you know, even in, even in the states, it's not easy. Mm. You know, documents like this are very well protected. Correct. Know? Yeah, for Correct. sure. For and yeah. the fact that it made all the way around the world, I think that's the last thing probably anyone <laughs> who signed that contract will expect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and I'm curious because you know, of course you know we yeah. all understand handling paper right after yeah. decades right those paper will either be be yellowed out or like crumpled <laughs> or what. Yeah. How how did it remain in this mean condition? Was somebody taking care of it all this while? Uh, yeah, because the I mean the previous owner he he's in the business, mm. he's in the business. Okay, so he he I mean he knows how to handle it. And when he sent it to me, it was triple sealed. Right. You know, it was triple oh. sealed, and uh, now I'm touching it with my bare hand, so I will expect some yellowing to happen soon. Oh no, <laughs> no! Better seal it back up, bro. Seal yeah. it back up. Nobody, we, we, we. It, the fact that it was done on this podcast, I we really appreciate it. Yeah, just, yeah, man. That's an exclusive, man. Amazing. Yeah, really exclusive, right? It's all bags, triple sealed. Yeah, I mean, it's Incredible. something that uh. I think it, it, the timing is just nice that you know it just came in and mm. just nice for this podcast and I mean support you know, support you know support worker as well right yeah this is <laughs> serendipity yeah, man. Man. something so yeah. so the question is uh would you mm. ever sell it or is it something that is you know like some collectors buy for the sake of selling yeah. you know, maybe the value yeah. will go up at some point that kind of thing but so would you ever part with any of your pieces given you know a favorable offer. Or is it just a thing of no? I want to okay. collect. I want to keep. All right. I mean, uh, I've always uh shared and mentioned that only I will only sell it on the basis of two, uh, two things. Mm-hmm. All right. Based on two, uh, one is for my kids, for my family. Mm. You know. Yeah. And the second one is if I can find another collector. Who loves it, you know, as much as I do, and is willing to take over the whole mm. thing, mm. which is not easy, you know. People right, like right. bits and pieces, and uh, you know, when sometimes people make an offer, you know, they do bits and pieces, it kind of breaks up the yeah. significance of my collection. You know, yeah. they yeah. take all the rare pieces, and then I'm left with all the commons, and right. <laughs> yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. yeah, as a collector. So I would rather prefer, you know, if the time is right to move them, you know. Mm. And uh, of course, uh, I have sold some parts of my collection to raise yeah. funds. Mm. Uh, because I, we did fundraiser. I mean, I used to work with uh, SPW guys. Oh, uh, not yeah. to share whether you guys know. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, Statement and all that. Uh, yeah. yeah, so we used to work together, you know, uh, wrestle the odds. Mm. Yeah, so this, this event, uh, we actually managed to help, you know, it was a fundraiser. We managed to raise some funds, uh, make a, a, a donation to children with cancer, mm. uh, as well as uh, the needy families in my area. Nice. Yeah, well, so, yeah. so... For a great on, cause, lah. For a great cause, I'm willing to sell. You know, I'm willing to take mm. out and sell, yeah. Awesome. In the scenario, uh, WWE, you know, hidden treasures, most probably, or WWE archivists somehow come up to you and say, Hey, you know, uh, we would love to bring this back to WWE, mm. and you know, for a token amount. Is it something you would consider? Uh, <laughs> uh this is a, a very difficult question. Uh, yeah. I mean, if I mean at the end of the day, if it's to be shared, you know, to me as a collector, if they take the item and it is to be placed somewhere, you know, like maybe a hall of fame place mm, or yeah. where they where they share it with other collectors. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm open to it. 
you know, mm. but I, I do not want it to be a situation where we take it, you know, they 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 film whatever they need to do with it and then it gets chucked aside. Oh right. yeah. They, they just store in warehouse. the warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. I don't think, you know, it, I yeah. mean such things are meant to be shared and you know, mm. my fellow fans appreciate yeah. my fellow fans. I, I believe in WWE Saudi Arabia they just opened the WWE World. Um uh, I, I it's like kind mm. of like a museum or like interactive um I guess yeah. uh you know, building, but would you, you know, be uh, open to the idea of like a physical hall of fame and to have all these memorabilia also stored there as well? Yeah, sure. Why not? You know, because it's a, uh, with a physical place, you, you, you know, they can actually open it, you know, fans from all over, all over the world can go and visit it, mm. you know, where, you know, and fans can, you know, fans are, uh, you born very easily, you know, common interests, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You make new friends from all around the world, you know, but probably not so much of a static display, you know, museum kind of thing. Mm. You know, with now with technology, right, they can yeah. probably do some interactive portions, yep. some 3D, 4D True. experience, you know, make it interactive. And I'm sure people will be willing to fork out, you know, to visit. Also, you know, if it's just a static, it's just how many times can the person Go revisit the, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i'm i'm open to them doing like a you know like art science museum open a wwe exhibition or something like <laughs> yeah yeah i mean definitely yeah, yeah. yeah. that's really, right. really cool yeah. yeah yeah um and and one last thing i think probably i think i will be remiss not to ask you right like um you you mentioned that you uh have worked with people in the local wrestling scene right um I know from the video, from the UC5 video, you did have like a signed item from like Dante Chen and Statement. Can you tell us a bit more about that specifically? Right. So uh, if you guys, you know, you have been following their careers when they first started, right? Uh, yeah. Before SPW had, you know, they have all these current titles. Mm-hmm. This was the first, the first two, the first title that they created, you know, the tech titles. Ah. Then, because they, they did not have enough people in the roster to have a world, you know, a champion and all that. Yeah. So it was a it was a, a tech uh tech team champions, you know. So yeah. uh when when we worked together, I I asked Andrew, you know, mm-hmm. he said, hey, are you willing to uh you know put these two up for auction for the live auction to raise mm. because this would be the highlight. You know, this was the, like the highlight of the the show, yep. you know, to mm. raise funds. So. He, he very kindly agreed, you know, he, he made his new titles after that, right? so he donated this, uh, the first, first batch, you know, first batch of titles, you know, uh, and uh, previously, uh, Andrew himself, uh, Sean uh, Dante Chen, right, mm-hmm. they, they used to wear this, they were the champions, so they, they wore these uh, titles, you know, to the ring, so it was like ring worn, right, mm, nice. so as a fan of wrestling, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't let them, you know, let it pass it, pass me by. Yeah. So I, I, I bid it, I bid it on, the, I mean, there are two titles, so two separate bids. Wow. So I managed to win one. Uh. Okay. And then uh, somebody, somebody else won, uh, won the other belt actually. Mm. Uh, but uh, a few years later, I managed to trace the person <laughs> and bought it over. <laughs> right. Oh. So you have both. So now I have, uh, yeah, I have, a, I have both of them. I mean, for a little bit of a selfish reason, you know, being, uh, as the organizer for that mm. uh, event, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that event holds a special significance to me. Mm-hmm. Awesome, you know? and, awesome. And uh, the belts were signed by all the talent who performed that night. So, oh, nice. Uh, nice. Yeah, so you have Jason, you know, Jason Ho Ho Loon, yes. uh, Dick, Dick Togo, mm. uh, Alexis D, right? Singapore's first female wrestler, Eurasian Dragon, Kenneth, yeah. nice, right? Nice. And uh, all these people. Yeah, so, and even, you know, uh, Back then, the uh, the guys from Grabber Max and all that. I mean, they all used to wrestle under SPW yep. umbrella, yes. right? Correct. Yeah. So all of them all signed on that nice. title as well. Right? Lady Killer Greg, yeah. the, the Traxxas, you know, the yeah. Traxxas. Yeah. So Bro, it, it was, in a way, it's like a, a huge piece of Singapore wrestling history that you that you own in a way, yeah. right? Yes, in a way. Uh, and that's why uh, I've placed it right at the top of my belt display. Uh, wow. the belt display, you know, even I place it even on top of the NWA titles and all the other WWE recruiters. <laughs> that is how much uh, emphasis I place on it. You know, uh, I mean, that's the top spot. Leave it, it for it, the local. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, if there was ever a great, you know, representative of you know local wrestling support, I think that that should be it, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, all of us are supporters, right? You guys are doing a great job supporting them as well, interviewing them, you know, giving them the media exposure, and it's mm-hmm. something that I think the boys need, you know, at this time of space, and you guys are giving them that airtime that they need, you know, to hone their craft, you know, to speak speak to a camera, to speak to the audience, you know, and even to even, uh. Uh, further their story the storylines right after because yeah. I, I, I saw that you guys also were interviewing them after the events and yeah, yeah. That. yeah so it's, it's, it's good it's great has also, the idea okay. of training ever crossed your mind <laughs> I mean you've been a fan for such a long time right like you know yeah. some of them also long time fans and then they sort of get the bug they think hey maybe I can do this maybe an exhibition match like my boy foreign over here because um, mm. he, he trained for one match uh, have you ever had that idea in your head Okay, uh, to be very honest, when, when, you know, WWF then, WWE, you know, they first advertised for the first Tough Enough. Oh. Uh, for the first Tough Enough. Uh, I, I was very interested, you know, I was very interested to to participate and all that, you know, but then after, you know, you look at the fine print, you look at the contract, and you look at, you know, all those things, just to join and participate and needing to move uh, out of Singapore. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And, at that time, I was quite young, you know, so yeah. my parents were not very uh, willing. Yeah, so just I right. just did my own training at home, on local soil instead. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right now, definitely, uh, the ring is it, not for me. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I for a certain <laughs> age, I can't take bumps anymore. True. <laughs> yeah, I just support them from the back. You know, as a back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fan. Yeah. 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 Yeah, a fan. Yeah. You know, you know, it's crazy. We, we all, we all also like sometimes acknowledge. Okay, like maybe we might be a bit too old, and, and then we got this one time AJ Styles looking Jack wow, right wow. now, <laughs> spoiling the bucket. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah what so is he like, like? Fifty or forty six or something like that? For, 47, 47, 47? Uh, looking, approaching fifty, approaching yeah. fifty. But but then guys, you know, he's been doing it his whole life. That's you, true. Yeah. You know, so it is, Copium, it is. We make ourselves feel better by saying that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the in ring conditioning, right? It's yeah. the in ring conditioning, you know. I mean, it's the psychology and the business wrestling has so many parts of it, yep. so many aspects of it. The production part, you know, the business aspect of it, you mm-hmm. know, the backstage part of it, and of course the in ring talent. Mm. So, uh, but you know, for for these people, they really live and mm. breathe wrestling. It's their life, you know, yeah. and they've been True. it you know, throughout all these years. So to them, you know, look at look at the rock is. He's not been wrestling for so long, but mm-hmm. look at him when he came back. His his timing, his conditioning, you Still know, there. the storyline. People just, you know, he basically he brought eyes to the product. The yes, moment he did. Appeared, right? he did. Yeah, he brought eyes to the product. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I I think I think what's great is like you know we all are wrestling fans and we so called express our fandom in yeah. different ways, but yeah. it's also in the service of like the love of wrestling and yeah. it's beautiful to see like, no matter yeah. how varied the way we support it, <laughs> it's still supporting wrestling, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, all of us, you know, support it uh, in different, in our own special way, you know, right? like yourself, I can see a, you know, a title in your wrestling books at the back, right? Yeah, yeah you know, there you, you go. Guys, you guys are doing a great job, you know. Oh, there you go, Mr. Young. Mr. Young, wow. He's one also very big, you know. I mean, he's quite yeah, big. Undisp- yeah, this is an undisputed one. The uh, Brock Lesnar, AJBL, the era. Yeah, nice, yeah, nice. yeah. I got, got one of them, yeah. But yeah, so you see, we, we I mean, we do it in different ways, lah, you know. But at the end of the day, many different pathways, but we all come back to the same, you know, the same That's angle, right? right? Yeah, Just yeah. Support them on. I would love, you know, um, if you're not aware, Sean, every yeah. year, end of the year, we do a Kick to the Gut Awards where we oh. do an so-called an award show and we, yeah. you know, give some local wrestling a bit of shine, uh, yeah. recognize them. And we were thinking of actually doing, uh, we, we've we been doing a Singapore Wrestler Top 20 ranking, like a bit like a PWI yeah, 500. I, I, yeah, I remember I saw that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so at the, at the end of the year, me and Young, we, we've been thinking of like actually making or creating like a physical plug or something that we can actually award the wrestler, right? Um, we, I would love if we can somehow work together on this because I think, I think this is something that you, you might give your experience or thought process on that because I think since you know best how to uh give back and organize stuff for local <laughs> wrestling, we would. Yeah. We should have copy, man, and talk about this. Sure, sure. I mean, always, you know, always good to collaborate uh, for the greater good, right? I mean, mm. we never know. Um, of course, I'm always open. Uh, you guys know 
how to how to get me right now, right? So yep. we have direct contacts. Uh yeah, we can always take it off. Uh, you know, take it offline, and we we'll see where it goes, man. No yeah, it, absolutely. Lo- Singapore always love to say take in corporate offline. nature. Let's take things <laughs> offline. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, true blue Singaporean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, is, it is. It is. Uh, but Sean, thank you so much for yeah. spending your Sunday afternoon with us. I know no you're worries. family man. Get back to your family things. We no got worries. family stuff to do as well. But uh, it's so great to connect with a fellow wrestling fan. Uh, yeah, like yeah, yourself, yeah. man. Definitely, man. I, I mean, I enjoyed, I enjoyed this, uh, this session as well. I mean, it totally didn't feel like you know, interviews. Really, more like chit chat session right. between friends, right? Yeah, Bro, for sure. I, I'm sure if we went through all the favorite feuds, <laughs> favorite storyline, favorite <laughs> wrestler, <laughs> we would talk for another three hours. But yeah, that's uh, a episode for another day. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, but once again, dude, thank you so much for spending your weekend with us. We really, really appreciate it, man. No worries, man. No worries.